Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. Don't forget to go and support the original author. He put a lot of effort into this. Well, let's continue now. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 226. A small bottle filled with black liquid appeared in Evan's hand. Seeing the bottle of black liquid, Evan felt he saw this thing somewhere before. Suddenly he remembered the bottle he got from Carlos's storage ring, and immediately threw it inside the storage ring again. It was the same liquid that he found in Carlos's ring, and gave Valerie to see if she can find what this liquid was. Evan threw it inside the storage ring again, because he still remembered the horrible smell of this liquid when he opened the cork of the bottle at that time. He has to leave his room that day because of the horrible smell of this black liquid. Just what the hell is this liquid that even Layla has one of its bottles? Evan muttered with a frown on his face. Carlos was also from the Dark Guild just like Layla. So he can guess that this liquid is definitely related to the Dark Guild. If Shadow Layla still has the memories of the original Layla, I can ask her what is this thing Evan said and decided to ask her after fully checking the storage ring. When he once again looked in the storage ring, he did not find any strange thing again. There was no armor inside the storage ring, since he remembered Lael was wearing completely destroyed armor when he killed her. She must have used that armor to protect herself from the tornadoes, Evan said inside. If he got an armor it would have been more useful to him. Soon he was done looking at everything inside the ring. Well considering she was an A-rank hunter, it is normal she will just have these types of calls, Evan said. While looking at the cores in front of him, there were 10 B rank, 4 B plus rank, and 1 A rank core in front of him. He wasn't surprised after seeing these cores, because it is quite easy for an A rank hunter to gather B rank cores. Evan put away those cores inside his shadow storage without any shame. After putting them away he nodded his head and summoned Shadow Layla to get answers of some questions that were bothering him. Master Shadow Layla appeared before him and bowed her head. Do you remember what your name is? Evan asked directly hoping she will have memories of the original Layla. You didn't give me any name, Master. Shadow Layla answered sounding confused by his question. Doesn't she have memories of the original Layla? Evan frowned after hearing her. He still remember how she told him the direction of Aquaville City yesterday, which would have been impossible if she doesn't have original Layla's memories. Don't you remember what was your name before you died? Evan once again asked looking at her. I remember that name, but I don't want to use that anymore. I want a new name from Master Shadow Layla said, sounding quite excited about the notion of getting a new name. Evan was speechless when he heard what she just said, but at the same time, he confirmed one thing. She still has memories of the original Layla. Evan thought and a smile appeared on his face. Since she knows what was her name before she died, then it means she still has memories of the original Layla. But if she really has memories of the original Layla then, Evan suddenly thought about something and looked at Shadow Layla with narrowed eyes. Since you remember what was your name before you died, then you must know I was the one who killed you. So why are you listing my commands? Evan asked while looking at her intently. If he was in her place and knew he has to listen to the order of someone who killed him, he would have plunged a knife into his chest the moment he went to sleep. He was afraid that she will do the same and will try to harm him. So he has to confirm that there is no danger in keeping these shadow undeads with him. What are you talking about, master? You didn't kill me. Instead you used your power to give me this new body, which is thousands of times better than my previous one. It is my honor to serve you, and I want to do it for eternity. Shadow Layla said while kneeling in front of him. Evan looked at her with a stunned look not understanding what this airhead was saying. But when he thought about what she said he found what she just said was true. This body is really thousands of times better than her previous one, since now she is basically an immortal. Even if she is completely destroyed, I can summon her again using mana. Evan thought and looked at Shadow Layla again. The more he talked to her the more he started to doubt whether she is an undead or not. I think there is still something that I don't know about Shadow Resurrection. Evan sighed not knowing if this was a good thing or not for her to act like this. Well, it is not like it is a bad thing. I will honestly prefer someone who can use his mind instead of acting like just a mindless puppet. Evan muttered and stopped thinking about it for now. He also noticed that even though the Shadow Hippo and his other Shadow Undead can't talk like Layla, they also don't behave like mindless puppets. 
I think Shadow Undead are the exact copy of the person from whom they are created. Shadow Hippo and others can't talk because they were unable to speak even when they were alive. Evan thought and focused on Layla once again. You don't need to kneel just stand up already. Evan said feeling uncomfortable because of the devotee-like gaze of Shadow Layla. Looking at her devotee-like expressions. He does not doubt that. If he left her alone, she will create a cult where all the shadow undead will gather to pray from a statue that looks similar to him. Hearing Evan she stood up, but her expression did not change. Evan ignored her expression and asked an important question. Can you still increase your rank? Chapter 227 I don't know. Shadow Layla answered because she doesn't know the answer of this question. Hum. Evan pondered for a moment because he already expected that she might not know the answer of this question. After some time he took out a B-rank core from his shadow storage and tossed it towards her. Try to absorb it Evan asked her after she grabbed the core. Layla tried to absorb the core but soon shook her head. It is not working. Do have a core inside you. Evan took back the B-rank core from her and asked wondering if she has a core like his prime core. No. Shadow Layla instantly said shattering Evan's hope. Since there is no core inside them, the chances of them being able to increase their rank is almost zero. Evan thought feeling disappointed, but he stopped thinking about it since his other shadow undead are B-plus rank while Shadow Layla is a rank. They are more than enough for current him. He will think about what to do with them when his rank will increase even more. Now that I am done with this, Evan muttered and looked at Shadow Layla. Who was the one who asked you to capture me? He wanted to know the person who wants to capture him and what is the exact reason. He is guessing that they wanted to capture him because they somehow found out he was the one who killed Carlos. It was Sarah, she was my superior in the Dark Guild. And an S-rank hunter Shadow Layla said in a disgust-filled tone when she called Sarah her superior. Evan was speechless after hearing her. S-rank. He muttered not knowing what to say. Even though he already expected this after knowing the person who wanted to capture him can even command an A-rank hunter like Layla. He still felt this was too much for a C-rank noob like him. Do you know what is the reason she wants to capture me? I don't know, she just sent me a message telling me you are in Aquaville City, and I have to capture you, Shadow Layla said while shaking her head. Then she seems to remember something and said, even though I am not sure, I think it might have something to do with Master's unique physique. I don't know if you have a unique physique or not, but Sarah always asks me to keep an eye out for people who have a unique physique and inform her immediately if I found someone. Evan narrowed his eyes after hearing Layla. Is she aware about my shadow monarch physique? Evan thought, but he denied this thought instantly. He never spoke about his physique to anyone, so the chances of them knowing about it were close to none. They don't know I have shadow monarch physique, but instead, they think I still have shadow physique. Evan concluded because most of the people were aware of his shadow physique. Do you know why she asked you to keep an eye out for people with unique physiques? Evan asked curiously, wondering what they want to do with people who have unique physiques. She never told me. Shadow Layla shook her head hearing Evan. Unique physique, huh? Evan muttered and remembered Dark Guild is also trying to catch a Valerie. Does she also have a unique physique? Evan thought and remembered her fight against Carlos. He doesn't know what kind of skill she used at that time, but she was able to fight against Carlos, despite the difference in their ranks. Was that skill related to her physique? Evan can't help but think finding it is quite possible, but he soon stopped thinking about it because Valerie's matter has nothing to do with him. Is this Sarah the leader of the Dark Guild? Evan asked since she was an S-rank hunter, so it was quite possible. I am not sure, but I don't think she is the leader. Shadow Layla said while shaking her head. Evan also felt the leader of an organization won't be free enough to pay attention to a noob like him. Plus, from what he knew about Dark Guild till now, it won't be strange if they have more S-rank hunters just like this Sarah. I need to increase my strength quickly. Evan sighed because, with his current strength, it will be impossible for him to do anything against someone who is an S-rank hunter. Yesterday, where were you taking me in that jet? Evan asked wanting to know the location of this so-called Sarah. I was told to bring you Ravenhurst City. She told me to inform her after arriving at the airport in the Ravenhurst City, and someone will come to fetch me. Ravenhurst City, if I am not wrong the Black Raven Academy is also located there, 
and there are many high-ranking hunters in that city, just like a start city. To think they are operating in a place like this. Evan thought finding it quite strange that they were operating in a city where many high-rank hunters are present. Do you know the location of their base in the city? No, it was my first time visiting there. Sarah told me someone will fetch me after I reach there. Shadow Layla shook her head. What a pity. Evan muttered while sighing. If he got information about their base, he would have informed the Hunter Association about it. This way he could have gotten a reward from the Hunter Association. Well, whatever Evan said and looked back at Shadow Layla. There was no point for him to think about Dark Gil for now. With his current power, he won't be able to do anything to them even if he wanted. How did you create that Orc Den? I remember you said you were behind the creation of that Orc Den. Evan was very curious about this thing. When he was locked in the White Room by Layla, and she came to give him dinner, she said she was behind the creation of the Orc Den. This hint was also the reason he understood Layla was from the Dark Guild. When Shadow Lila heard his question she opened her mouth and told him everything. Chapter 228 How did you create that Orc Den? Evan asked with a curious expression on his face. I used Fetid Miasma to create it. Shadow Layla said while looking at him. Fetid Miasma. What is that? Evan asked wrecking his brain to remember if he heard about this thing before. It is a special potion created by an S-rank alchemist of the Dark Guild. Shadow Layla said in a plain tone like this is not a big deal. On the other hand, Evan was stunned after hearing her. They even have an S-rank alchemist. He just heard about Sarah from Layla who is an S-rank hunter. And now she is telling they even have an S-rank alchemist working for them. Just how strong their organization is. Evan can. T help but think. But at the same time a different thought also came into his mind. If I can kill that alchemist and turn him into Shadow Undead, I will have my personal S-rank alchemist. Not just alchemist. I can even get a personal blacksmith and ask him to make a perfect weapon for me. With the help of Shadow Resurrection, I can make a perfect army for myself. But currently, I am too weak to even think about something like this. Evan muttered and put this thought at the back of his mind. He took out the small bottle of the black liquid from Layla's storage ring. Is this the fetid miasma you are talking about? Yes. Shadow Layla nodded her head after seeing the small bottle. How did he create something like this? Evan asked genuinely curious because there are other S-rank alchemists as well in the world. But no one was able to make something like this till now. I think they found its creation method inside a ruin. Shadow Layla said sounding a little unsure. But when Evan heard her, he found it quite possible because he don't think even an S-rank alchemist will be able to come up with something like this. How does it work? And how can it summon so many orcs there? Evan asked while looking at the small bottle closely. Master, it doesn't summon orcs. Shadow Layla shook her head. With this, we can cause a dungeon outbreak. We just have to spill this liquid on the floors of the dungeon and monsters will be able to come out from it. There is actually an A-rank dungeon with 15 floors deep within that mountain range. When I found that dungeon around two months ago, I used a concealment formation to hide it from the other. Then I used Fetid Miasma on the first five floors to cause a dungeon outbreak in it and created another concealment formation to hide the area where most of the orcs were gathering after coming out from the dungeon. In just a few days most of the orcs from the first five floors came out from the dungeon and created an orc den there. When they successfully created their den, I removed the concealment formation and asked some of my guild members to inform the hunter association about the orc den near the city. When Hunter Association heard about it, they immediately sent someone to investigate the Orc Den, and after confirming there was really an Orc Den there, they released a mission about it. Evan heard her while looking at the small bottle with a surprised look on his face. He can't believe a small bottle like this can be used to cause a dungeon outbreak. So if I go into a dungeon and spill it inside it, all the monsters from the dungeon will be able to come out from it, Evan asked, and looked at Shadow Layla. Yes, if it is a dungeon without floors, then all the monsters will be able to come out from it. But if it is a dungeon with floors, you will have to spill a bottle on each floor, Layla said while nodding her head. A dungeon without floors means dungeons like the Shadow Kingdom, while dungeon with floors means dungeons like the Frost World. So the reason there were just two A-rank orcs, and many low-rank orcs, was because you used it only on the first five floors Evan asked while putting away the bottle. Yes, Shadow Layla nodded her head. 
But there was still one question that Evan wanted to ask. Why did you create that orc den? He can't understand why she did such troublesome things. She used concealment formation to hide that dungeon, then used fetid miasma to cause an outbreak. And after the orc den was formed, she informed the hunter association about it. He can't understand what was the reason behind all of these things. I was the guild master of the silver rank guild, Sacred Heart. The guild was just a step away from being promoted to the gold rank guild. But there was no suitable opportunity for it even after a few months. So when I found that dungeon by chance, I decided to create the opportunity by myself. I used Fetid Miasma to create that orc den and contributed the most. Even though the event where the orc turns out to be someone with a unique skill was quite unexpected, it still went according to plan, and just before I left for Ravenhurst City, the guild was promoted to gold rank. Shadow Layla said, but Evan noticed she was saying all of this like it is not a big deal. It was obvious she don't care about the guild now. Even though Shadow Layla doesn't care about the gold rank guild, Evan was different from her. Gold rank guild, huh? It would have been awesome if you can become its guild master, Evan muttered while looking at Shadow Layla. But the way you look now, there is no way you can replace her. Even though Shadow Layla has all memories of the original Layla, there is no way she can replace her. Now that she looks like a shadow. But the next second Evan's eyes opened wide, and he looked at Shadow Layla with a shocked face. Master, if you want me to continue to stay as the guild master, it won't be too difficult. Chapter 229. In front of Evan, the appearance of Layla started to change. The small purple flames burning in her eyes started to disappear. Her pitch black hair which looks like strings of black mana, started to turn light golden in color. Evan's eyes were wide open as he watched her appearance return to normal. In just a few seconds the appearance of Shadow Layla completely changed. And now she was looking exactly like the original Layla. Same golden color hair, black eyes, red lips, big bow. Go back inside Shadow Storage. Evan shouted while looking at the ceiling of the room. He just realized the color of the room's ceiling is completely white. An excellent choice. Shadow Layla didn't ask anything and immediately went inside Shadow's storage. Evan looked inside Layla's storage ring with twitching eyes, and throw all of the clothes that were inside it into his Shadow storage. Then he used his skill Shadow Senses skill, and ordered Shadow Layla to come out after wearing the clothes. After some time Shadow Layla came out from his Shadow storage fully dressed. She was wearing a normal red shirt and a black skirt. She was looking like just a normal beautiful woman. If other people saw her, they won't be able to tell that she is actually not a normal human, but a shadow undead. How did you change your appearance? Evan asked without any expression on his face. I have a skill name. Chameleon Illusion. It allows me to change my appearance however I want Shadow Layla said while looking at Evan. Oh Evan nodded his head after hearing her. For a moment he thought that all of his shadow undead can take their original appearance. Do you have all the skills of the original Layla? Or did you get new skills after turning into Shadow Undead? Evan asked because he forget to ask this question earlier. I didn't get any new skills after transforming. But I still have all the skills that I had before died Shadow Layla said while shaking her head. Evan nodded his head and pondered for some time. While looking at Shadow Layla. Now that Shadow Layla was looking exactly like the original Layla. She can easily take her place as Guildmaster. But there are a few problems that he will have to deal with, so that she can become the guild master. First and the most important problem is the Dark Guild. Layla was supposed to bring him to Ravenhurst City yesterday. Previously he didn't think too much about it, since it wasn't his concern. He was thinking about returning to a straight city after finishing his business here. He did not care what Sarah or the Dark Guild will do after knowing he somehow escaped and Layla died. He was sure that they won't suspect that he, a D-plus rank hunter, killed Layla who was an A rank hunter. But now that he wanted to make Shadow Layla the new guild master, he will have to prepare a good excuse about why she didn't bring him to Ravenhurst City, and how he escaped from her. There is a very high chance they will call her back if she didn't give them a good reason, and if she tries to ignore them, they might do something that will destroy the guild completely. He wanted Shadow Layla to be a guild master and a member of the Dark Guild at the same time, so that she will be able to provide him latest information about the Dark Guild. At the same time, 
He will not have to worry about many things if Shadow Layla becomes the guild master. First, gold rank guilds will have many dungeons under their control. If he made her guild master he will be able to enter in those dungeons without any problems. Second, he will not have to worry about money or cause, because the entire treasure vault of the guild will be under his control. Third, he will be able to order around the members of the guild to do his bidding. Like if he needs cause from a specific monster, he can send a team to hunt that monster and bring its call. There are many other things that will greatly help a person like him who doesn't have a big background. If he made Shadow Layla Guild Master of the Sacred Heart. Alright, even though it will be dangerous for me, the rewards are definitely worth the risk. Evan finally made up his mind and come up with a plan that will allow Shadow Layla to fall the Dark Guild. There is no way he will miss such a good opportunity. If she became Guild Master, I won't have to worry about joining another guild in the future so that I can enter a rank dungeons. With this gold rank guild, I will be able to enter a rank dungeon without any problem. Evan muttered with his eyes shining, he doesn't have to reach S rank, since he can use the Tower of Ascension after reaching A rank because of his title rule breaker. So are you ready to resume your duty as the guild master of the Sacred Heart Guild Evan? Asked Shadow Layla with a wide smile. Just the notion of having a gold rank guild under him made him excited. But master what about the dark guild? How are we going to deal with them? They will definitely try to do something since I did not bring you to Ravenhurst city. Shadow Layla asked after hearing him. Evan nodded his head when he heard her. He was happy she can think about these kinds of things without him saying. It would have been difficult for her to operate the guild. If she can't even think about these kinds of basic problems. Don't worry about the Dark Guild. I already have a plan in mind. It will be a little dangerous, but I think it will work somehow. Evan said while waving his hand. Chapter 230. Master, can you give me a name now? After Evan told her what to tell Dark Guild Shadow Layla asked him. Evan was confused when he heard her and asked. Why do you want a new name? Since you will be acting as the Guild Master of the Sacred Heart, you can just use your previous name. I will use that name when I will be in the Guild. But I still want a different name from Master Shadow. Layla said while looking at him with anticipation. Evan's mouth twitched. And he was tempted to give her the name. Shadow Layla. And finish this Rux. But seeing her anticipation filled gaze he wasn't able to say it. Whoosh exclamation point. Suddenly three more shadows shot out from his shadow storage, and the shadow hippo along with the other two also appeared before him. And just by seeing their anticipation filled looks, he can guess that they also wanted a name. What a headache. Evan muttered while rubbing his chin. If it is up to him he would have given them names like A1, A2 and so on. And from the looks on their face, he is certain that they will accept those names without saying anything. They just want a name from him no matter what is it. And since from now on they are going to help him, he also felt if he just gave them some half-baked names, he will be an A asterisk shoal. You can use illusion element right? Evan asked while looking at Shadow Layla. Yes, Shadow Layla nodded her head. Alright then, from now on your name will be Illusia. Evan said after thinking for about 10 seconds. He knows his naming sense is a bit twisted. Which is why he tried his best to come up with a good name. That will suit her. Illusia Shadow Layla muttered. And a happy smile appeared on her face. Good, from now on I shall be known as Illusia. Evan also sighed in relief seeing she was happy with the name. After Illusia, he looked at his second shadow undead, the hippo. He rubbed his chin and pondered for some time while looking at it. Since you can use water element and Aquaville City is also famous for its water view. How about I give you the name Acquire Evan said, after thinking for about two and a half seconds. Even though this hippo is clearly a male and Acquire sounds like a female name, it is not like anyone will care about such small things. The most important thing is that the name must sound pleasant to ears. Evan thought to himself after giving Shadow Hippo its name. Gree. Acquire nodded its head while grunting, and looks quite happy after receiving its name. After a choir, Evan looked at the Cyclops. The Cyclops was 5 meters tall. It was good that the ceiling of the room was quite high, so it was able to fit in the room without a problem. The body of Cyclops was weaker than Orcs by a small margin, but unlike Orcs, they can use skills, so in overall comparison, they were more powerful than Orcs. 
Evan looked at its appearance while deep in thought. The one eye at the center of its forehand was burning with purple flame, giving an eerie feeling. A big pointy horn was coming out from the center of its head. Its hand and feet were quite muscular, while its stomach was completely round giving it a chubby appearance. Necros, from now on your name will be Necros. Evan said after thinking for about 7 seconds. Grah. Aqua made a dissatisfied sound while looking at Necros. It was angry that Evan gave it a name after thinking for about 7 seconds, while its name only took 2 and a half seconds. For some reason, it was feeling its name is fake. Of course, it was not angry at Evan but at Necros. It was unreasonable, but that's how it is. It was demanding a name exchange with Necros. You. Necros ignored Aqua and bowed its head at Evan after receiving its name. After bowing when it raised its head, Evan can swear he saw Necros showing a smug smile to Aqua like it was mocking it. Gra. Aqua made a threatening sound seeing the smug smile of Necros. Evan was happy that Aqua wasn't wearing a glove. Or it would have already thrown it at Necros to challenge it for exchanging the name. It is fine as long as they don't start a fight. Evan thought and ignored both of them. He looked at his last shadow undead. It was a panther. And it was the only one who was at the B rank among his shadow undead. Aqua and Necros are at B plus rank, while Illusia is at A rank. After turning into shadow undead, the panther was pitch black in color. In other words, it was a black panther. After seeing it, Evan did not even think for a second before one word automatically came into his mind. Yibum. Evan said while looking at the panther. The B rank panther was stunned. Illusia was stunned. Necro and Aqua were also stunned and stopped fighting. All three of them looked at the Black Panther who was standing with a dazed look on its face, and the next second. Ha ha ha, Illusia started to laugh like there is no tomorrow. G-H-H-H-H. Aqua and Necros also followed and started to laugh while giving the Panther a pitiful look. The Black Panther looked at Evan for some time before lowering its head, and a depressed aura started to come out from its body. Evan was stunned when he saw what was happening, but he soon understood why they were laughing. Illusia and others were laughing at the Black Panther, because Evan did not even think for a second, before giving it a name. In their eyes, its name is completely fake. G-H-H-H-H. Evan was completely speechless when he saw Aqua, who was just fighting with Necros for name exchange, walk in front of the Black Panther and started to mock it. The poor Black Panther continues to look at the floor of the room without lifting its head. Even though it wanted to beat down Aqua, it was just B rank, and can't fight against Aqua who is a B plus rank. From the depressed expressions of the Black Panther, Evan was sure that it would have already committed suicide, if not for the fact that it is already dead. Why are you all laughing? I am still thinking about the name for your junior brother don't disturb me. Evan wasn't able to see the Black Panther in such a depressed state, and said in a stern voice. Huh, master but did not you already give it a name? Illusia asked while looking at him with a confused face. Aqua, who was laughing, was also stunned, feeling the script is wrong. When did I say it was your junior brother's name? I was just thinking about other things and spoke out loud. Now don't make a sound. I am thinking about its name. Evan said and closed his eyes pretending to be deep in thought like he was thinking about an important matter. Actually, he already thought of a good name for the Black Panther, but was taking more time intentionally so that it won't think its name is fake again. The depressed aura around the Black Panther also disappeared, and it was now looking at Evan with a hopeful gaze. Soon more than 15 seconds passed by. Aqua was already looking at the Black Panther with narrowed eyes. It was ready to initiate a name exchange challenge. All right, from now on your name will be Eclipse. After some time when Evan thought it was enough, he finally opened his eyes and said, Chapter 231. The room was silent. But Evan can feel the tension in the air. The undead body of Eclipse was trembling under the piercing gaze of three shadow undead. C-O-U-G-H asterisk. Illusia. What happened to the body of the A-rank orc? You and the other two A-rank hunters killed. Evan asked trying to change the subject. So that the poor Eclipse can take a breath. Besides, if he can create a shadow undead from the orc who was able to use lighting. His power will be increased greatly. Most of the bodies of the orcs including a rank, were collected by the Hunter Association. If I am not wrong, they should have already processed the body of both of the A rank orcs. 
since the bodies of high-rank orcs are quite good for making armor and weapons. Illusia said shattering his hope of getting a rank orc as in Shadow Undead. But there was still one thing that made him frown. What about you? You also fought against those A-rank orcs. You did not get anything from the bodies of those orcs. We found one A-rank core from those two orcs. I already had a good weapon and armor. So I took the A-rank core and gave the bodies to Aaron and Austin. Illusia said while shaking her head. So the A-rank core I found in her storage ring was from the orc, huh? Evan thought while nodding his head in understanding. Then he took out the Illusion Weaver sword from Layla's storage ring. This is your sword, right? Evan asked while giving the sword to Illusia. Illusia took the sword while nodding her head. Try it. See if you can still use it or not. Evan asked wondering if she will receive the buffs from the sword. Illusia tried the sword and at the same time used her skill. After a few moments, she stopped using her skills and said with a smile, The sword is perfect. I don't feel any difference from before. When Evan heard her he sighed in relief, he was afraid that his shadow undead might not be able to use weapons properly. Just like how they are not able to use cores to increase their ranks now. After Illusia confirmed there was no problem for Shadow Undead using weapons, Evan took out the Eldritch Tree Club which he got from the B-Rank Orc during the Orc Den mission. Necros. Evan said while tossing the Tree Club towards it. Necros is a humanoid monster just like Orcs, and this club was a perfect weapon for it. Necros caught the club and looked at it with shining eyes. Use it well Evan said when Necros caught the club. Currently Evan is dirt poor and can get millions of credits. If he sells this Eldritch Tree Club. But increasing his power is more important than money. If Necros can use the club probably. Its strength will definitely increase. Besides. Now that Illusia can take Layla's place as the guild master Evan wasn't concerned about money. Soon the treasury of the Sacred Heart Guild will be under his control. G-R-R-R. Just like last time. Aqua growled at Necros seeing it got a weapon from its master. It was challenging Necros for the right of weapon. Hearing Aqua, Necros did not respond and once again showed a smug smile. Evan was speechless when he saw this. He really wanted to ask Aqua how the hell it is going to use that tree club even if it got it. It is not like it can use the tree club like Necros who has human-like hands and can lift the club. Is this fool thinking about holding the club in its mouth and swinging it here and there? Evan can't help but mumbled thinking the ick of Aqua is quite low. Evan looked at Eclipse and was even more speechless when he saw it was looking at him with hopeful eyes. Don't tell me you want a high-tech transformation suit as a weapon. Evan thought and ignored all of them. For some reason he was feeling not a single one of his shadow undead is normal. Aqua is a fool of the group with a low IQ. Evan doesn't even want to talk about Necros. He doesn't know what this guy is thinking. But there is a smug smile on its face all the time. Like it will lose money. If he doesn't show that smile. Layla, well what he can say about her. Currently, she was the most troublesome for him. Since she is going to be the guild master of the Sacred Heart. She will be staying here. And will not go back with him. When he will return to a straight city. But whenever he sees her devotee-like expressions, his heart can't help but shudder, thinking that she will turn the guild into a cult, if he left her alone. And the last one Eclipse, what can Evan say about him? There was just one thing that came into his mind whenever he see it. Yibum. I am feeling like I suddenly became a sect master of a shady sect, and got a bunch of troublesome disciples. The more he looked at them, the more he felt they are not undead. All of them act like they are still alive. The only difference is that now they have different bodies than before. Well, it doesn't matter what they are. Because even though they are troublesome. I don't hate this feeling Evan said while smiling a little. Maybe, because he was alone most of the time. He was feeling quite good. Knowing that there will be some people with him all the time. Ready to help him at any moment. Now that I am at C rank and got a bunch of disciples. I can finally enter the B rank dungeon and finish my business in Aquaville City. Evan said and looked at Aqua and others. He was quite excited to see how they will perform in a B rank dungeon. He also wanted to test his power against B rank monsters without using shadow energy. It will be quite interesting when I will clear B rank dungeon solo. Evan said and smiled thinking about his dungeon expedition. Chapter 232. Illusia. Contact her and tell what I told you earlier Evan said to Illusia, while throwing a communication crystal towards her. 
He found it in her storage ring. Illusia told him earlier most of the time Sarah contact her through communication crystal instead of a phone. Because it is safer than mobile phones. Illusia caught the crystal and came near Evan before contacting Sarah. Where are you? You were supposed to be here yesterday. It didn't take long before Evan heard a female voice from the other side of the crystal. From the voice, she doesn't sound older. Which surprised him because he thought she will be an old hag with a hoarse voice. After hearing the voice, Illusia looked at Evan who nodded his head. Seeing Evan nodding his head, Illusia took a deep breath. And, B-I asterisk C-H, do you want to kill me? Illusia shouted like an enraged lioness like her cubs were being threatened by someone. Evan who was at the side was stunned and looked at her with his mouth wide open. Miss Undead, I just ask you to act a little angry. Not to go ahead and call her a B-I asterisk C-H. Evan genuinely wanted to ask Illusia if is she not afraid of death calling an S rank hunter a B-I-T asterisk H. But he stopped when he remembered she is really not afraid of death. What do you mean? Unexpectedly Sarah was not angry after hearing Illusia and asked her in a confused voice. Acting all innocent now her B-I-T asterisk H. Didn't you tell me M-A-S-T asterisk I mean that Evan is just a D-plus rank hunter. Illusia shouted once again almost calling Evan master. Evan was sweating at the side, feeling he should have practiced with her before letting her call Sarah. Yes, when he left the Astrait City he was a D-plus rank hunter. Sarah said feeling even more confused. Ha ha ha. Illusia started to laugh. But anyone who can hear this laugh can instantly tell that it was a laugh filled with anger. Evan was astonished after seeing her. If not for the fact that he knew she is acting, he would have genuinely thought that she is holding the anger of the entire world inside her. D plus rank. Who are you trying to fool? He is a B rank. Illusia said in a trembling tone like she was trying to control herself. What? A shocked voice sounded from the other end of the crystal. Don't act like you are shocked. I know you don't like me much, but was it necessary to scheme against me like this? Illusia shouted out loud in a trembling tone like she is on the verge of crying. Evan already took out his phone and started to search for a trophy that looks similar to Oscar. Look Layla, I don't know what happened, and why are you so angry? But believe me, I didn't do anything. Can you first tell me what exactly happened? Sarah said while taking deep breaths. She was becoming more and more confused after hearing Illusia. Illusia smiled when she heard Sarah, but her face was filled with anger. It was a strange scene where her mouth was smiling, while her face was filled with anger. Seeing her, Evan finally realized the grand level of acting. All actors in the movies are just so-so. Sarah heard Illusia taking deep breaths trying to calm down. She did not rush her and waited for her to calm down, thinking something big must have happened. I don't know if you are behind this or not, but I will trust you this time. Sarah heard Illusia's voice after some time. I caught the boy you told me around a month ago without any problem, and did what you asked me to do. I was busy dealing with the matters of my guild, so I asked Droin, the guy who appeared in Chat 210, to take care of him. He used all of his signature techniques on him torturing him every day with different methods. But since he was just a D-plus rank hunter, I asked him not to go overboard, so that he won't die, because of the different kinds of tortures. Everything went according to plan, and his mind was completely broken in the past few days. Also I and Droin thought Illusia said, and paused like she was trying to arrange her thoughts. Sarah continued to hear her while paying full attention. Yesterday after I was done with my guild matters I brought him to the airport. Since wanted to avoid unnecessary attention, I used my personal jet which I bought with my lifetime savings. Evan who was hearing at the side, stopped looking for Oscar's trophy, and slowly turned to look at Illusia with his eyes wide open. Personal jet, the jet I destroyed after waking up was her personal jet. Evan felt some invisible needles piercing his heart. If that was Illusia's personal jet, doesn't it mean if he did not destroy it yesterday, he could have kept that jet for himself. After his mind was broken he was just like a dead human. So I put him in a medical capsule inside the jet, and we set off for Ravenhurst City. Illusia did not pay any attention to Evan, who was feeling depressed. After knowing he destroyed his chance of having personal jet, and continued to tell Sarah her fake story. Everything was fine for the first few hours. I was sleeping because I was working very hard for the past few days. 
but after around three hours I felt a strange aura coming out from the medical capsule. At first, I was confused about what was happening, but soon I noticed Evan who should be unconscious, opened the medical capsule and sat up. Just looking at him I felt there was something wrong with him. The strange aura I felt was also coming out from him. I was about to make him unconscious again, but then it happened. Boom Dash Chapter 233 Boom Dash I don't know the reason, but suddenly the medical capsule in which I put him earlier exploded. The interior of the jet caught fire because of the explosion, but it was immediately resolved by the safety mechanism of the jet. But after the explosion when I looked for Evan I wasn't able to find him. Illusia said while taking deep breaths from time to time like she was still shocked by the event that happened yesterday. I was just about to look for him in the cockpit when suddenly I felt a piercing pain from the depth of my soul and I was shocked to find out my soul was severely injured. Just as my soul was heavily injured I saw Evan appearing there, and the shocking thing was that the aura around him was that of B-Rank Hunter. Illusia said and paused for time. Seer was shocked when she heard Layla's soul was injured. Just what kind of skill can injure the soul of an A-Rank Hunter instantly? Sarah thought and continued to listen to Illusia. I don't know what kind of skill he used to make himself disappear or how he injured my soul but he instantly attacked me after coming out. Because my soul was severely injured, I wasn't able to fight against him properly. Even though his power was at the beginning of the B rank, he took advantage of my injured soul and tried to kill me. I used all of my skills and a life-saving artifact to save myself at that time. In the end, the jet was destroyed because of a fight, but I somehow managed to escape from there. After escaping, I thought I was safe but that Evan had a skill that allows him to fly, even though he was just B-rank. While in mid-air, he once again used another strange skill, and I lost more than 80% of my mana instantly. If I am not wrong, it was definitely a unique skill that can drain someone's mana even from a long range. My soul was damaged and I lost most of my mana. At the last moment in order to save my life, I used an escape scroll that I got after clearing a dungeon some time ago. Illusia said and paused there. Sarah was shocked after hearing Illusia. Actually, Evan was also a little shocked by the story-making ability of Illusia. He didn't tell her anything in detail, and just told her roughly what to say. But she went a step ahead and became a proper storyteller. But it's not like it is a bad thing Evan said while eating some peanuts. He was fully enjoying how Illusia was fooling an S-rank hunter. But my luck turned out to be worst. Because when I used the escape scroll to teleport away, I was teleported near two A-rank monsters. I was already out of mana, and my soul was injured. But in the end, I was somehow able to escape from them. Even though I escaped from them, I was heavily injured by those A-rank monsters. My armor was completely destroyed. I lost my sword while fighting against them. Illusia said while gritting her teeth like she was on the verge of exploding because of losing her armor and weapon. With great difficulty, I came back to the city avoiding monsters of the wilderness. I wanted to find that guy Evan, but when I returned I found that guy already informed the Hunter Association about this incident and he even found out that it was Dark Guild who kidnapped him. It was a good thing I was using a different appearance with the help of my skill when I kidnapped him. If I didn't alter my appearance as a precaution before, I am afraid I would have already been caught by the Hunter Association. Moreover, now the people of the Hunter Association are keeping a close eye all over the city, looking for the people of the Dark Guild. I will have to lay low for the time being and won't be able to do anything. Illusia said and sighed in the end. I never thought that guy was hiding his power all along, and is a B-rank hunter Sarah didn't care much about Layla's situation, and thought, looks like he was hiding his rank all along. This also explains how Carlos died. He must have been killed by Evan's surprise attack, just like how Layla was caught off guard. After hearing Illusia she was even more interested in capturing Evan. Now she was certain that Evan's physique is not normal. Don't worry about him. You don't have to do anything for now. I will take care of this matter. And believe me I didn't know he is a B rank hunter. After some time Sarah said to Illusia who was silent. Do you think I will do anything even if you ask me in my current situation? Illusia asked in a sneering tone and said. I don't care what you are going to do. But I lost my jet, my sword, my armor and some valuable artifacts, 
all because of your wrong information. I hope you will send something satisfactory for my loss. Or you can forget about asking for to do anything for you in the future. Evan looked at Aluja with his mouth wide open. He never thought that she will even try to exploit Sarah. He did not tell her to ask for anything. But the next second he closed his wide open mouth and gave her a thumbs up. It was obvious that whatever she will get from Sarah will belong to him. Sarah was silent for some time after hearing Aluja. Evan waited while holding his breath, hoping she will agree to give Aluja something good. Alright, I will send an armor and a new weapon for you. After some time Sarah said after some time. Don't you think just a weapon and armor is too little for what I have gone through? Aluja did not agree to Sarah's offer, and asked with a frown on her face. Let me make it clear Layla. Even though the information was wrong, the target was still lower level than you. It was your fault for not being able to make a proper judgment at that time. I am giving you the armor and weapon, just because I was the one who asked you to capture him. So don't try to push your luck too much. Sarah said in a cold voice after hearing Illusia. Hearing Sarah, Evan knew they won't be able to get more things from her. So he nodded his head at Illusia. Alright then. I will be waiting for my armor and weapon, Illusia said after seeing Evan nodding his head. Sarah immediately cut the communication after that. It went better than I expected, Evan said to Illusia, after Sarah cut the communication, and both of them smiled like villains who just accomplished their goal. Chapter 234 Now they will most likely send only high-level hunters after me, Evan said while looking outside from the window of the cab. Since Evan gave Dark Guild fake information that he is a B-rank hunter, and can even injure a rank hunter, he knew they will now most likely send more A-rank hunters, or even an A-plus rank hunter after him. Evan knew it might be dangerous, because currently, he can't fight against an A-rank hunter by himself. His only A-rank shadow undead Illusia will also stay in Aquaville City, and will not come back with him, but he still did it because once his prime core healed, he will be able to increase the rank of both of his cores without any problem. Once the rank of his monarch core increases, he will be able to save more shadow undead, and at the same time, his power will also increase. Besides, he wanted to turn the hunters who come to capture him into shadow undead. If Evan wanted to create high level shadow undead of humans in the future, he will have to kill high level, human hunters. Human shadow undead are more useful for current him, because all of them will be able to use artifacts, unlike monsters. But he can't just go around and kill human hunters for no reason to create shadow undead. Even though Evan knew he is not a saint, and doesn't give a sh asterisk t about the world, he is also not someone who will kill humans for no reason. But it will be a completely different story if the person wanted to harm him. And he has a feeling that Sarah will definitely send someone after him. With her help, he won't have to worry about searching for high-level human hunters. I just hope she will send someone useful. Evan thought with a slight smile on his face. Currently, Evan is going to Verdant Wilds Dungeon. It has been two days since Illusia told her fake story to Sarah. After telling the fake story to Sarah, Evan asked her to return to the Sacred Heart Guild. After returning she successfully took the role of the guildmaster without any problem. She has memories of Layla and looks similar to her because of her skill. So no one suspected anything. With his skill share senses, they can contact each other whenever they wanted. It is a B rank dungeon mainly filled with plant and animal type monsters. He wanted the skill. Energy absorption that a plant type monster named Thornbloom has. Verdant Wilds dungeon is under the control of. White Luna. A silver rank guild. Before setting off, Evan already checked that no one enter VWD, dungeon name in short, for quite some time so he can go there. If someone entered and cleared the dungeon, it would have taken some time before the dungeon can be used again by other people. Evan was glad no one enter this dungeon for some time, and he will not have to wait to enter in it. I forget about it, but I wonder if there was a problem in the Frozen World dungeon. Since I took the body of the Frost Troll from there, Evan suddenly remembered what he did in the Frost World dungeon and can. T help but chuckle. Then he thought about another thing, and his eyes shined. Now the space inside my shadow storage is very big. I can easily store the bodies of monsters that I kill, and sell them to make extra money Evan said inside his mind, and immediately decided to rob the monster. S corpses from the VWD dungeon. 
He couldn't care less if something happened to the dungeon. Once he took away the corpses of the monsters from it, the money is more important to him. After three hours he finally arrived at the place where the VWD dungeon was located. Just like the Frost World dungeon, this dungeon was also covered by high walls made from special materials. Most of the dungeons inside the cities are secured like this, because if by chance a dungeon breakout occurred, these walls will be very helpful to prevent unnecessary causalities. After paying the taxi bill, Evan walked towards the only entrance he can see to go inside the high walls. Two C-rank hunters who looks to be in their late 30s, were standing guard there. Since it is a B-rank dungeon, it was normal that instead of low level E or F rank hunters, C rank hunters were guarding it. Seeing Evan coming towards them both of the guards raised their eyebrows. Do you need something? One of the C rank hunters asked because in his eyes, Evan was just a D plus rank hunter, and there is no way he will go into a B rank dungeon, while being only a D plus rank hunter. I want to enter in VWD dungeon. Evan replied while taking out a golden card from his storage ring. It was the dungeon access card that he got after getting first place in the examination. He handed the card to the guard who took it with a dazed look on his face. Do you know the rank of this dungeon? After taking the card, the guard did not look at it instead he asked Evan. Don't worry I know everything about the dungeon. Evan replied perfectly knowing why the guard asked the question. Hearing Evan the guard finally looked at the card, and after seeing it, he took out a scanner from his storage ring. He scanned the card and asked Evan one last time, Are you sure you want to go in? This is a B rank dungeon, and one of the most troublesome at that. Yes, Evan said with a firm expression on his face. Alright then, the guard said and pressed a button on the scanner. Now you can use this card nine more times the guard said while giving back the card. Evan already knew he can use the card four only ten times, so he wasn't surprised after hearing the guard. The guards opened the door and watched as Evan walked toward the portal in the distance. Young people these days are very reckless. The guard muttered while watching Evan going towards the portal. Soon Evan arrived before a green color portal which was the entrance of the VWD. The energy fluctuations coming out from the portal are far more powerful than the fluctuations of the Frozen World Dungeon. Evan muttered and took a deep breath. He glanced at his shadow for a moment and stepped forward with a confident smile on his face. Chapter 235 After entering the dungeon Evan found himself in a large open area. There were some trees in the area with some grass covering the ground. Verdant Wilds Dungeon is a flawless dungeon just like a Shadow Kingdom. But compared to Shadow Kingdom Dungeon, the VWD is tens of times bigger. There are different kinds of areas inside this dungeon where different kinds of monsters can be found. Like the monster, Thornbloom, which Evan wanted to look for can be found on the west side of the dungeon. The west side of the dungeon is a desert. There is a large forest on the east side of the dungeon, a swamp on the north side, and a mountain terrain area in the direction of the south. To clear the dungeon one has to reach at the end of one of the four directions. Since Evan is going to the west side, he will have to cross the desert and reach its end. After reaching at the end of the desert, he will be able to enter the boss room. And after killing it, he will be able to clear the dungeon. But before going to west, I will have to take care of them. Evan muttered when he saw some monsters in front of him. Evan narrowed his eyes as Aqua, Necros, and Eclipse came out from his shadow storage. There were four B-rank monsters in front of him. Two were vine crawlers, a monster that was 5 meters tall, and looks like a dark green tree covered in hundreds of vines. Two deep red eyes were shining at the middle of its body, giving it an eerie look. The other two were Moss Whisperers, a monster who looks like a giant mass created from rotten moss. Moss Whisperers can manipulate the plant life around them, and are very dangerous if someone faces them in a place full of plant life like a forest. World. Both Moss Whisperers quickly made their move when they saw Evan and Shadow undead. In just a second, they took control of all the plant life within 150 meters of the area around them. The trees, vines, grass, even the underground roots were under their control. All the trees in the surrounding shook as their leaves shot out towards Evan and others like sharp blades. The ground was split open, and the roots of the trees came out trying to wrap around their feet along with nearby grass, to restrict their movements. Both of the vine crawlers didn't stand on ceremonies, and also made their moves. The hundreds of vines on their bodies lit up and dark green smoke started to come out from them. Whoosh dash. 
Both vine crawlers controlled their vines and attacked Evan and Shadow undead, along with moss whipperers. There were hundreds of leaf blades, poisonous vines of the vine crawlers, roots, grass and many other things coming in Evan's direction, but his expression didn't change. Finish them quickly, they are not a target. Just as Evan said, Aqua, Necros and Eclipse moved at the same time. The purple flames inside Aqua's eyes turned light blue, and it covered Evan and itself in a water barrier. Necros stepped forward and used one of its skill strength enhancement. That can increase its strength by 100%. Normally a user won't be able to use this kind of skill for a long time, and will even receive a backlash, because of pushing his body too beyond its limit. Before dying, Necros was the same and used this skill only as a last option, because it took a great toll on its body. But now the situation is completely different. Now Necros doesn't have to worry about any kind of backlash. Even if its body is heavily damaged, Evan can heal it instantly with his mana. Crimson color smoke started to come out from Necros' black skin, and a dominating aura exploded outward from its body. Necros held the Eldritch Tree Club with both of its hands. The muscles of its hands bulge out, and it used another one of its skills, Meteorite Fist. But instead of channeling its strength through its fist, Necros channeled its strength into the Eldritch Tree Club, and swung it into a 360 degrees arc. Boom dash. A loud sonic explosion happened. The ground tens of meters of the area around Nerkos was shattered, and the grass and the roots coming out from the ground were instantly destroyed by the sonic waves. All the leaf blades that were coming in their direction were blown away, along with the poisonous vines of the vine crawlers. The trees that were being controlled by the moss whispers were uprooted and rendered useless. The water barrier that was covering Evan shook fiercely, and Aqua used more of its mana to reinforce it. With just a single attack, Necros resolved all the attacks of vine crawlers and moss whispers. If Necros wasn't injured back then I am sure Aqua would have never been able to kill it Evan thought when he saw how powerful Necros's attack was. While Necros resolved the attack, Eclipse didn't stay ideal. Even before dying Eclipse was a Shadow Panther, and had many skills related to Shadow. Now, after truing into a Shadow Undead, all of its skills were actually more powerful than before, because of the influence of the Shadow Energy. When Evan turned it into an undead using shadow energy, all of its shadow type skills received a great boost in power. Eclipse used Shadow Valley a stealth type skill and disappeared from its place. Using Shadow Valley it appeared behind one of the vine crawlers silently and used its skill Shadow Claw. Whoosh dash. The claw of Eclipse shined like the sharpest sword in the world and it slashed at the vine crawler. The vines covering the body of the vine crawler were instantly destroyed and a green liquid gushed out. Roar dash. The vine crawler roared in pain, but Eclipse used its high agility and slashed at the same place two more times before the vine crawler can react properly. The body of the vine crawler was almost halved into two pieces as a large amount of green blood come out from its body and it dropped to the ground writhing in pain. Only when the first vine crawler dropped to the ground the second one reacted and attacked Eclipse using its vines. But Eclipse once again used its Shadow Valley skill and disappeared from its place. Boom dash. Suddenly a loud booming sound echoed out, and Necros who already resolved the earlier attacks of the four monsters, jumped into the air using its monstrous strength. A deep crater appeared on the ground, and the vine crawler saw a one-eyed monster coming down from the sky, while smashing a tree club at it. Boom dash. Evan felt the entire floor of the dungeon shake as a giant dust cloud rose in the sky. Debris of shattered ground flew everywhere, and everything within 200 meters of the area was completely destroyed. There was only one word that come into Evan's mind after seeing Necros acting so recklessly. F-U asterisk K. Soon the dust cloud settled down, and Evan saw the vine crawler turn into meat paste because of Necro's attack. But what shocked him even more was Necro's condition. It was missing one of its arms, and most of its body was in a complete mess. Because of its powerful attack, the vine crawler who was injured by Eclipse was also dead. Aqua removed the barrier around them and shot a water gun attack at one of the Moss Whisperers. The defense of the Moss Whisperer was very low because it was just a mass of rotten moss. With just a single attack, Aqua killed one of the moss whisperers. Eclipse who disappeared earlier, suddenly appeared behind the last moss whisperer, 
and killed it with a shadow claw. When Eclipse killed the last Moss Whisperer and its body disappeared, a dark green bee rancor dropped from its body. Evan ignored Aqua and Eclipse, and walked towards Necros who was heavily injured, because of using strength enhancement to its limits. Even though its body was in a complete mess Evan can see there was no painful expression on Necro's face, instead, it was smiling. Having a body that can't be destroyed is truly a great advantage. Evan thought and arrived before Necro's. Chapter 236 When Evan came near Necro's, he saw it was missing one of its hands, and its body was heavily injured from all over the places. Seeing Evan, Necro stopped using strength enhancement, and the crimson aura stopped coming out from its body. Let's see. Evan muttered and used his mana to heal Necro's. Mana rushed out from his monarch core, and Evan saw Necro's body start to return to normal at a speed visible to the naked eyes. In less than three seconds Necro's returned to normal which surprised Evan because he thought it will take more time. But what was most surprising for him was the amount of the mana that he used to heal Necro's. The mana consumption is lower than I expected. Evan thought feeling relieved. With his current amount of mana, and his mana recovery speed, Evan felt there won't be any problem, even if he will have to heal more Shadow Undead. Previously, Evan wanted to tell Necros don't act recklessly like this again, because he wasn't sure how much mana he will have to use to heal them. But after seeing he doesn't need much mana to heal them, he didn't say anything to it. When Nurkrose was fully healed it looked at Aqua and showed its signature smug smile. It was obvious that Necros was telling Aqua that it is stronger than it. Evan ignored both of the muscle heads and went towards Eclipse, who was the only one with the brain. Eclipse already collected the cord dropped by the Moss Whisperer, and even checked the bodies of the other three monsters. But it did not find any core in the bodies of the other three monsters. Good job Eclipse, Evan said to Eclipse while patting its head. He also took the core from Eclipse and put it away. Since his prime core is still damaged, he can't absorb any core. Even if he collected many cores of the Thornbloom monster who has energy absorption skill, he won't be able to absorb their cores for now and get the skill. But Evan was not concerned about this fact. Since he can't absorb them for now, he will just collect all the cores that he can collect from Thornbloom monsters and will absorb them after his prime core recovers. Even if he doesn't get the skill in the future after absorbing all the cores that he will collect, he can just ask Illusia to send a team from the guild in the Verdant Wilds dungeon to farm cores of thorn blooms. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Eclipse purred like a cat and rubbed its head against Evan's head when he patted it. Did you receive something after turning into Shadow Undead? Earlier I felt your Shadow Valley and Shadow Claw skills were more powerful than normal. Evan asked while rubbing its head. The Vine Crawler was also a B-rank monster just like Eclipse, and its defense is above average compared to other monsters. But just by using a basic skill like Shadow Claw Eclipse, heavily injured the Vine Crawler which is not normal. Ah, uh, ara, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Eclipse shook its head while saying something. You did not receive anything new, but your skills became more powerful after turning into Shadow Undead, Evan said in a surprised voice after hearing Eclipse. Evan was confused for a moment after hearing Eclipse, because the skills of Necros and others were still the same, and their power did not increase. But it did not take him long to realize what was going on. Eclipse was a Shadow Panther and most of its skills were related to Shadows. Before I turned it into Shadow Undead. Maybe because of Shadow Energy the power of skills related to Shadow increased. Evan thought and find it possible. Just as Evan thought it another thing come into his mind. After reaching to see rank my Shadow Storage skill is also upgraded. Could it be my other skills related to Shadows also? Evan thought and quickly opened his status window to look at the details of his skills. He first looked at Dimensional Shadow Bullets, and just as he expected, this skill was also upgraded. The range of his Dimensional Shadow Bullet increased from 20 meters to 50 meters. Now he can use shadows within 50 meters around him to shoot Shadow Bullets. Plus the number of Shadow Bullets also increased from 5 to 6 and the chances of the blindness effect being activated is now 8% instead of the previous 5%. After looking at the dimensional shadow bullet he looked at the details of ice chains and found it was still the same. Details of wind manipulation were also the same and it did not change. 
Looks like my guess was right, and only my skills related to shadows were upgraded. Evan muttered and looked at the details of Shadow Walk. There was no change in the details of his Shadow Walk skill. But he knew the stealth effect of his Shadow Walk skill is way better than before. In future, I should try to gather some Shadow Calls and get skills from them to see if they will be upgraded because of Shadow Energy or not, Evan said, and sat down at the back of Eclipse. He did not collect the bodies of the Moss Whisperers and Vine Crawlers, because, well, a certain one eyed Shadow Undead turned both of the Vine Crawlers into meat paste, and Moss Whisperers were nothing but a mass of rotten moss. Let's go Eclipse. Evan patted Eclipse's head and indicated it to move into west direction, where the desert is located, and thorn blooms can be found. Roar Dash. For the first time after turning into a shadow undead, Eclipse roared out loud and started to run in the direction of the desert. Aqua and Necros who were bickering, saw their master riding on Eclipse's back and leaving from there. Both of them looked at each other, and instantly stopped arguing as they also ran after Eclipse. Chapter 237 Finally we are here Evan said while narrowing his eyes because of the bright sunlight. Currently, he was standing at the top of the hill, while looking at the endless desert in front of him. After traveling for more than 10 hours, Evan finally reached at his destination. While traveling they encounter many B and B plus rank monsters. But they were no match for Evan and his shadow undead. So he got some extra cores from them. Another thing that made him happy was the fact that his shadow undead doesn't get tired and have unlimited stamina. While coming here they didn't rest even for a moment, but they were still in their top condition. If Evan come here by himself, it would have taken him at least one day to reach here. But since he was riding on Eclipse who can run all day without getting tired, he reached here so early. According to what I read about this dungeon, there is a den of Thornbloom monsters inside the desert. On the internet it was mentioned to avoid that den, because their number is very high, and it is very hard to deal with them. Evna said and patted Eclipse's head indicating it to move forward. But it is a good thing for me that there will be hundreds of Thornbloom monsters, with their numbers. I will not have to worry about not being able to gather enough cores to get the skill I wanted. Eclipse was standing at the top of the hill which was more than 100 meters high. But when Evan patted its head, it moved forward without hesitation. Just as Eclipse took a step forward a water slide which was going all the way down to the hill appeared. And Eclipse slid downwards at the rapid speed, arriving at the bottom of the hill in seconds. Nocros and Aqua also followed suit and came down from the mountain using the water slide. After they came down Aqua stopped using its skill, and the water slide disappeared. Just as Evan came down, and Eclipse's feet touched the sand he felt the surrounding temperature rising. Just as I read on the internet, the temperature will increase the moment we enter the desert. Evan muttered feeling the surrounding temperature. The temperature in the desert was around 60 degrees Celsius. Even though the temperature was quite high, with his high constellation, it was no problem for him to endure this much heat. The high temperature just made him a bit uncomfortable and nothing more. Well, I have a choir with me. I can ask it to make a small pool for me, if the temperature starts to bother me. Evan thought while feeling great that he have a choir with him. Let's go Eclipse he said to Eclipse who charged inside the desert completely unaffected by the temperature. Evan also took his Wind Fury Sword, and used Wind Manipulation to coat it with the Wind Element. Other than plant types of monsters, there are many other dangerous monsters in the desert, like the Sand Serpent and Desert Scorpion, which blend perfectly with the sand, and can travel through underground to attack you by surprise. Rumble exclamation point exclamation point. Evan didn't move for long before the sand around him started to shake. Eclipse stopped moving and looked around it vigilantly. Necros and Aqua also stopped not far away from Evan. Whoosh exclamation point exclamation point. Suddenly the sand in front of them rose, and a small 10 meters tall sand tornado formed there. The sand particles inside the tornado were spinning at a rapid speed, looking like small sharp needles. Suddenly the sand tornado exploded sending sharp sand in all directions. Evan created a wind barrier in front of him, stopping the sharp sand coming towards him and Eclipse. When the sand tornado exploded, a 5 meters tall serpent with light yellow scales and deep orange eyes appeared before him. The yellow scales on its body were shining brightly because of the sunlight, and the aura around it was that of B plus rank. A sand serpent. Evan muttered seeing the sand serpent. After appearing the sand serpent attacked at him and Eclipse who were closeted to it. 
It opened its mouth and a sand vortex which was five meters wide shot toward Evan and Eclipse. Like it wanted to swallow them. Don't interfere. Evan said to Aqua and Necros, who were about to charge at Sand Serpent for attacking their master, when they heard Evan's voice and stopped. Seeing the sand vortex Evan narrowed his eyes, his grip on the sword hilt tightened. The wind fury which was covered in wind particles, shone with green light, and he vertically slashed at the incoming vortex. All the wind element that he gathered on his sword all this time turned into a long wind blade that shot toward the incoming sand vortex. The sand vortex clashed against the wind blade, as the surrounding wind instantly became chaotic. A sand storm formed because of the clash of two powerful attacks, as the sand flew in all directions, creating some sand dunes. Evan jumped down from Eclipse's back, and charged towards the sand serpent, while using wind manipulation to stop the chaotic wind and sand particles coming in his direction. Hiss dash. The sand serpent hissed in anger seeing Evan coming in its direction. Suddenly the sand around the serpent shook, and tens of sand balls the size of baseball came out from the ground. The orange eyes of the serpent shined brightly, and all the sand balls shot towards Evan like meteorites. Seeing sand balls coming towards him, Evan's eyes flashed as he used his newly gained skill. Temporal Velocity Just as he activated the skill, the sand balls which were coming towards him slowed down in his eyes. He was instantly able to see the clear trajectory of all the incoming sand balls, and knew which sand ball he can dodge, and which sand ball he has to block. When sand balls arrived before him he did not slow down, and using his increased agility, easily dodged most of the sand balls while moving forward. Wind Fury was flashing with wind element, as he cut down the sand balls that he wasn't able to dodge. Just as Evan thought he is about to reach the serpent, a sand pillar shot out from below his feet, sanding him fly 20 meters high in the sky. Hiss dash. After sending Evan flying the serpent hissed, and shot out a sand vortex toward Evan who was in mid-air. Damn it. Evan looked at the sand vortex and used shadow wings to dodge it at the last second. But the sand vortex still touched his shoulder, and his crimson hell armor was instantly destroyed from that area as a deep wound appeared on his shoulder. Evan wasn't surprised seeing the armor was destroyed so easily after all. It was just a C-plus rank armor, while the serpent is a B-plus rank monster. He ignored the wound on his shoulder and arrived above the sand serpent using shadow wings. He slashed at the serpent from above, and all the wind that he gathered since the fight started turned into a wind blade that shot towards the serpent. Hiss dash. The serpent felt a lethal threat from the wind blade and tried to move away from there, while raising a sand wall to stop the wind blade. But just as the serpent was about to move away it felt a terrible headache like someone was stabbing needles in its mind. Poochie dash. Before the serpent can understand what happened, the wind blade arrived before it and struck it right at its head. Red blood gushed out from the serpent's head, dyeing its vision red as it hissed in pain. Evan did not miss this chance as he dived down while deactivating his mind suppression skill. While coming down Evan started to spin his body. His sword struck the head of the serpent like a drill. Boom dash. The scales covering its head were easily penetrated, and wind fury dug deep inside its head. Farewell Evan said, and all the wind that was covering his sword turned into sharp blades that destroyed its brain. Chapter 238 Thud exclamation point The giant body of the sand serpent fall to the ground, and Evan sat down on its head while exhaling a deep breath. Sand serpents is just an above average B plus rank monster, but it still took some effort for me to kill it. If I consider all the things my power should be around the peak of B plus rank. Evan stood up and looked at the dead serpent. Once my prime core also advanced to C rank, I shouldn't have any problem dealing with any B plus rank monster. Evan thought and smiled a little. He was quite pleased with his current power, especially with his spiritual strength. Earlier he used mind suppression on the sand serpent, and the result was surprising. Previously his spiritual power was even weaker than a D rank hamster. But now it is already on par or even higher than a B plus rank monster. I wonder what was the thing that I absorbed after passing out that made my soul so powerful. Evan thought while drinking a healing potion to stop the bleeding of his shoulder. I should create a shadow undead that can use healing magic. It will be very helpful for me. Evan thought and jumped down from the head of the serpent. Eclipse Evan called Eclipse and asked it to look for the core. With its sharp claw, it was quite easy for it to slash the scales of the serpent. 
and look for the core. After one minute Eclipse took out a core and handed it to Evan, who put it inside his shadow storage. Quote now. After putting away the core Evan looked at the serpent and smiled. Shadow Resurrection. Evan used Shadow Resurrection skill. He felt shadow energy coming out from his monarch core and going into the body of the sand serpent. He carefully looked at how much energy was being used since the last time he wasn't able to pay attention to it. The energy consumption is not much. Evan thought after seeing his monarch core was still full of shadow energy. Now his shadow energy is at C rank, and he can use it to create a large amount of shadow undead before it runs out. The shadow resurrection did not fail, and soon a black serpent rose in front of him. Seeing the serpent Evan was pleased, since it will be quite useful for him in this desert. Evan used shadow storage and put away the body of the sand serpent to sell it later. Then he once again sat down on Eclipse's back. Move through the underground, and bring out any monster who is hiding to ambush us. Evan said to the serpent who immediately dove inside the ground. Eclipse also started to move forward, while Necros and Aqua follow from behind. Evan used share senses and saw the sand serpent moving underground just a little far away from them. Suddenly through the sand serpent, he saw a worm-like monster who was hiding within the ground waiting for prey. Sandworm. Evan recognized the monster and saw the sand serpent rushing towards it. The sandworm was startled after seeing a black colored serpent coming toward it. Because it never saw a serpent like this before. Boom dash. Suddenly some distance away from Evan, sand burst forth, and the serpent came out from the ground along with the sandworm. The sandworm was also a B-plus rank monster, and its fighting power was similar to the sand serpent. Both of them were attacking each other trying to gain advantage. But it was clear that the sandworm was having difficulty because sand serpent can completely ignore the injuries. But worm can't. But Evan doesn't want to waste too much time. So he signaled Aqua to help the sand serpent. Aqua opened its mouth and used one of its skills. Hydro cannon. A concentrated beam of pressurized water with tremendous force came out from its mouth going straight towards the sandworm. Some sand dunes that came in the way of the beam were blasted away as the beam directly struck the sandworm. The worm was thrown away from the sand serpent as a large hole appeared on its body, and red blood gushed out. The sand serpent took advantage of it, and shot a sand vortex towards the worm, who wasn't able to avoid it. Soon the sandworm died, and Evan moved toward its body while still sitting on Eclipse's back. He looked for the core but didn't find anything. After not finding the core Evan used Shadow Resurrection once again, and a black sandworm appeared in front of him. Even though he can only save 5 Shadow Undead, there is no limit to how many Shadow Undead he can create. The Shadow Undead which are not saved will disappear in one hour. But Evan did not care about it. Now let's create my temporary army Evan said, and Eclipse once again moved forward. Shadow, Sandworm and Serpent once again went into the underground keeping an eye on other monsters. Five hours later. Hiss dash. Around ten poison sand scorpions. Hissed in painful voices as their face was filled with despair. Black colored sand serpents. Sand worms. Desert crawlers. Sun fire cacti. And many different kinds of monsters attacked on them at the same time. There were around 30 black colored monsters who were attacking at the group of the scorpions. Poison sand scorpions are one of the most dangerous predators of the VWD desert. Because of being able to use poison and sand element at the same time, they are more powerful than the monsters who are at the same rank as them. Most of the time, if a team of hunter encounter a group of sand scorpions, they can just run away from them because dealing with them is not easy. But in front of those 30 black colored monsters, the group of sand scorpions was not able to last long, before all of them were bombarded to death by different kinds of attacks. It ended earlier than I expected. Evan muttered and walked towards the dead group of the scorpions. He first looked for the cores and found three cores. One B plus rank and two B rank from the ten scorpions. Suddenly Evan saw one of the sandworms who was standing near him disappear. It's one hour is over, huh? Evan muttered, but did not care about the worm who disappeared. He looked at the 10 poison sand scorpions, and used shadow resurrection. Soon 7 black scorpions rose in front of him, while 3 failed. Evan once again used shadow resurrection on the remaining 3 scorpions, and successfully tuned them into shadow undead as well. 
Let's move forward. Evan nodded his head in satisfaction and sat down on Eclipse's back once again. A small army of 39 shadow undead stood behind him as he once again started to move. H-U-M-M-M tilde tilde tilde. Just as Evan started to move he heard a mesmerizing voice. And his eyes turned hazy. Chapter 239. H-U-M-M tilde tilde. Suddenly Evan heard a mesmerizing humming sound and a sweet aroma assaulted his nose. Smelling the aroma Evan's mind became hazy, and his eyes turned unfocused. He jumped down from Eclipse's back, and started to walk in a different direction. But the next second his spiritual power surged, and he immediately came back to his senses. What the hell was that? Just as Evan came back to his senses he felt goosebumps rising all over his body. He wasn't able to understand what just happened. H-U-M-M-M tilde tilde tilde. Suddenly he once again heard the mesmerizing voice and smelled the same aroma. He felt something was trying to invade his mind. But this time he was ready and used his spiritual power, and easily blocked it. Evan looked at his shadow undead, and saw they were unaffected by the sound and smell. Soon he remembered a piece of information that he read while looking at the details of this dungeon, and finally understood what was happening. Looks like my luck is not just for show Evan said, and immediately jumped back on the back of Eclipse. He carefully heard the voice and ordered Eclipse to move in its direction. Evan summoned back all the shadow undead who can't travel underground back to his shadow. Only Necros and Aqua were left with him, while the shadow undead who can travel through the ground, went underground to keep watch and drag out any monster who tried to sneak attack on him. After 5 minutes of traveling, Evan saw an oasis. Seeing the oasis, a smile appeared on his face. So, I was right, huh? Evan muttered looking at the oasis. H-U-M-M tilde tilde tilde. The humming sound and the sweet smell was way stronger than before near the oasis. But Evan was still able to resist it with his spiritual power. When he was 200 meters away from the oasis, he used shadow wings and flew high in the air. The oasis was surrounded by lush trees. So he wasn't able to see what was inside it from the ground, which is why he used his wings. When he came high in the sky he saw only the outer area of the oasis was filled with trees. While in the middle of the oasis, a small 100 square meters wide water pond was located. The water pond was covered in a rainbow colored barrier. The water of the pond was crystal clear, and a rainbow colored flower with seven petals was blooming in the middle of it. From time to time the flower was shaking and releasing a rainbow colored smoke which was spreading in all directions. H-U-M-M-M tilde tilde tilde. After spreading the rainbow colored smoke the flower was making a mesmerizing sound. As expected, it is a mirage blossom flower. Evan muttered after seeing the flower. Mirage Blossom is a rare plant type monster specialized in spiritual attacks. When Evan was looking at the details of VWD he read about this special plant type monster. In the details, it was mentioned that on a very rare occasion, there is a chance that you might encounter a Mirage Blossom flower inside the desert of VWD. This plant type monster appears very rarely, and it is quite valuable. The body and the roots of this flower can be used to create a potion called Soul Strengthening Potion that can increase the power of your soul. Currently, Evan's soul power is already very high and a potion made from this kind of flower won't increase his soul power. But there are many people who will willingly pay him millions of credits for this flower. It was written that the entire oasis is the territory of the Mirage Blossom and it can even control the trees and other things present inside the oasis. Evan muttered, and a cold smile appeared on his face, too bad this kind of thing is useless against me, who has a walking war machine with him, he said and came down from the sky. In the details, it was also mentioned that if you encounter a mirage blossom flower, you should avoid it, because it is very hard to deal with it, and even if you defeat it, you won't be able to bring the flower out from the dungeon. But Evan who has a title rule breaker this is a big opportunity to make some money. Necros smash Evan said to Necros while pointing at the oasis. Hearing Evan a wide smile appeared on Necros face. It stepped forward and the eye at the middle of its forehead lit up with red light. A large amount of energy gathered inside its eye and after 5 seconds a scarlet colored beam shot toward the oasis. The trees in the outer area along with vines were ripped apart and immediately disintegrated. But there were still many trees left inside the oasis. A deep crimson aura started to come out from Necro's body, as it once again used its strength enhancement skill. Booyom Dash. 
The muscles all over its body bulged out as it jumped high in the sky, appearing around 70 meters above the oasis. Evan saw the leg muscles of Necros were ripped apart because of using so much force while jumping. After arriving above the oasis the crimson aura around it intensified even more, as it used strength enhancement to its limits, and turned into a burning sun. Whoosh dash. Necros folded its body like a ball and shot downwards like a meteorite. Boom dash. It crashed at the other end of the oasis, where most of the trees were left after its earlier beam attack. All the remaining trees and any other things which were inside the oasis, were blasted away scattering in different directions. The lush oasis turned into a barren land in an instant, and only the pond which was covered in a cracks filled rainbow colored barrier, was completely unaffected by the attack. The shockwaves were so powerful that even though Evan was 200 meters away from the oasis, he felt the ground below his feet shaking. Is this guy want to annihilate dinosaurs or something? Evan was completely speechless seeing what Necros just did. Earlier when he told it to smash the oasis, he thought it will destroy it just like how it smashed the vine crawler and destroyed a large area at that time. But he never thought it will take it to the next level this time. Evan slowly walked towards the oasis or the place where the oasis was located a moment ago. He looked at the barrier covering the pond but ignored it for the time being, and walked toward the wide crater some distance away from the pond. The crater was 20 meters wide and 5 meters deep. When Evan looked down in the crater and his eyes can't help but twitch. In the middle of the crater, Necros was laying with half of its body missing. But on its face, there was still its signature smug smile. Evan can't help but wonder if Necros is a masochist seeing it was still smiling. It took more mana to heal Necros completely which was expected since its injuries were more severe than last time. After healing Necroa Evan finally came before the barrier in which the flower was located. Evan used Shadow Walk and passed through the barrier without even trying to break it. When he passed through the barrier he smell and the sound flower was making was very strong. But Evan used his spiritual power to protect his mind and arrived near the flower using Shadow Wings. Other than being able to control the entire Lasis, the Mirage Blossom Flower doesn't have any kind of offensive skills, and its spiritual skills were useless against him. It is time we break up my dear poverty, Evan said while laughing and plucked out the flower. The rainbow-colored luster around the flower dimmed a little, but Evan was not worried since it was normal. He took out a small box from his shadow storage, and put it away in it. With this my money problem is solved even without robbing the treasury of Sacred Heart Guild. Evan muttered and was about to fly away when he suddenly noticed something in the pond. Chapter 240 Evan looked at the crystal clear water of the pond and noticed something shining at its bottom. Is there an artifact or something inside the pond? Evan thought and dropped a fire cacti shadow undead into the water to check if there is any other monster in the pond. He used shadow senses, and after confirming there is no danger in the water he dove inside the pond. The pond was just 5 meters deep, and he arrived at its bottom easily. When he arrived at the bottom of the pond, he noticed a green colored stone which was shining brightly. Evan came before the stone and found it was releasing a very low amount of energy fluctuation. The energy fluctuations were the same as the fluctuations that came from a dungeon portal, but it was very weak when compared to a dungeon portal. Evan narrowed his eyes seeing the stone, and something clicked into his mind. Using shadow senses he told Aqua, Necros and Eclipse to come at the bottom of the pond. When they came down he summoned them back into his shadow storage. Then he ordered his other shadow undead, who were roaming the underground of the desert to kill any monster they found, and bring their bodies near the pond. After ordering them he looked at the green stone and touched it. Whoosh dash. Just as Evan touched the stone a bright green light flashed and he disappeared from the place. Evan felt his surroundings turning blurry, and the next second he found himself standing in a completely different place. He immediately summoned back Aqua and others, and looked around carefully. As I thought, that was the entrance of Arunus. Evan muttered after seeing there was no monster near him. Unlike the ruins of the Frozen World Dungeon, currently, he was standing at a place that looks like a forest. There were many lush trees around him, while the ground was filled with fresh green grass. The sky was light blue, and clouds were moving just like the outside world. The cool wind was flowing, bringing the fresh smell of forest with it. Evan turned around and saw a green portal behind him. At the same time, he noticed a giant tree not so far away from him. 
The tree was around 200 meters high, and was the biggest tree that he can see there. Evan first used shadow wings and flew up in the air to see if he can see find anything strange, other than the giant tree. But when he reached 200 meters high, the same height as the giant tree he noticed he can't go up anymore. It was like an invisible wall is blocking his way to fly up, and the blue sky is just an illusion that he can see but not touch. Evan raised an eyebrow when he wasn't able to fly up. Looks like this area is not as big as it looks. Evan muttered and looked around him not trying to go up anymore. But after looking around he didn't find anything odd other than the giant tree. Since there is nothing else, the monster and the treasure of the ruins should be near that tree he said and flew towards the tree. But he landed around 200 meters away from the tree and did not dare to go there directly. He first wanted to see the situation near the tree before taking any decision. After landing he slowly approached the tree with slow steps while looking around carefully. He was walking in the middle while necros and others surrounded him. When he was around 100 meters away from the giant tree, he was finally able to see everything near it clearly. What the? But when he saw what was at the bottom of the tree his eyes nearly popped out from their sockets. At the bottom of the tree, a slender figure of a woman with long pointy ears was sitting with her eyes closed. She was wearing a long sleeveless red dress, her long, flowing gold and silver hair cascading down her back, adorned with delicate silver and emerald hair ornaments. The strands of her hair seemed to dance in the gentle breeze. Her skin, as fair and smooth as moonlight, bears a faint luminescence, hinting at her otherworldly origin. A subtle radiance seems to emanate from her, casting a gentle glow that further accentuates her innate grace and beauty. Elf Waifu, Evan's past life attack who took over as he blurted out with a dazed look on his face. But he quickly shook his head and returned back to his senses. What the hell is going on here? Evan still can't believe he was seeing an elf sitting in front of him. From what he read in the academy he knew elves don't exist in Aurora world. Not even in the dungeons has anyone found one till now. Or maybe people saw them. But did not make it public just like the facts about ruins. Evan muttered while arching his eyebrows. Suddenly he noticed something floating some distance away from the elf. When he focused, he saw they were two golden colored fruits. The size of an apple. They must be reward for clearing the ruins. Evan said while looking back at the elf. Even though the aura around the elf was B plus rank, Evan can feel a lethal threat from her. Can she talk? Evan wondered thinking if she can talk like humans or not. After pondering for a moment he decided to try something. He summoned a fire cacti shadow undead from his shadow storage. The fire cacti looks like normal cactus. It was one meter tall and was filled with red spikes, which were radiating heat. After summoning the cacti Evan commanded it to move towards the elf. He wanted to see her reaction upon seeing the fire cacti. The cacti obeyed Evan's command and moved towards the sitting elf without any hesitation. When the fire cacti was just 50 meters away from the elf, Evan saw her amber color eyes shoot open, and she disappeared from her place. Boom dash. The next second he wasn't even able to see what happened before a loud booming sound echoed out. Chapter 241. Boom dash. Evan wasn't even able to follow up with his eyes as to what happened before he heard a loud booming sound, and the next thing he knew was that his connection with the fire cacti he sent towards the elf was lost. In other words, the fire cacti was destroyed in an instant, and since the cacti was not his saved shadow, he can't summon it once again. F U asterisk K. Evan can't help but curse feeling speechless that she killed a B plus rank fire cacti in an instant. From her powerful aura he already knew she was strong. But killing a monster at the same level as her with just a single move is still far above his speculation. The dust cloud settled down where the fire cacti was a moment ago. And Evan saw the graceful figure of the elf standing there. One more thing that he noticed was that her eyes seems hollow. Like she is some kind of robot. There were no emotions in her eyes. Seeing her eyes Evan frowned. Can she talk? He can. T help but think seeing her hollow eyes. But considering how she attacked the fire cacti immediately without any warning, the chances of her talking were very low in his eyes. Suddenly the elf turned her head and looked in the direction where Evan was standing. Seeing the elf looking in his direction, he quickly hid behind a tree, so that she can't see him. Of course, he wasn't afraid of her. He has many ways to deal with her, but is not the right time to face her. If he kills her now he will be teleported out from the dungeon. 
Just like how he was sent out from the Frozen World Dungeon, after clearing the ruins, he still wanted to collect the cores of the Thornbloom monsters before leaving the dungeon. Luckily the elf just looked in his direction for a moment before walking back toward the giant tree and sitting down again. Evan sighed in relief when he saw she didn't start a fight with him. She is strong than any peak B plus rank monster I ever saw, Evan muttered while rubbing his chin. Looks like I know who is going to be my fifth shadow undead. Evan looked in the direction he came from and decided to leave for the time being. He first wanted to collect the cores from the Thornbloom monsters before dealing with her. Before leaving he looked at the two golden colored fruits, and can't help but wonder what kind of fruits they are. Since they are the reward for clearing the ruins, they must be something good. I saw the portal to leave this place earlier, but I just hope I will be able to enter here once again after leaving from here. Evan muttered and started to walk away from there. As Evan walked away, the elf who was sitting under the tree, opened her eyes and looked at his retreating back before she closed her eyes once again. Evan reached at the portal and summoned back Eclipse and others inside his shadow storage again. After summoning them back he entered the portal. He felt his vision turning blurry once again, and the next second he was back inside the pond. He looked at the green stone and was glad to see it was still releasing energy fluctuations, which means he can go there once again. He came out of the pond and saw three dead monsters there. He was inside the ruins just for a few minutes. But his shadow undead who were roaming in underground killed three monsters and places their bodies near the pond, just as he told them. Evan summoned back Necros and others and asked Eclipse to look for the cause. This time his luck was not good and he didn't find any cause from the three bodies. But he didn't mind since there is still many monsters inside the dungeon. He used Shadow Resurrection and two poisonous sand scorpions and one sand serpent rose in front of him. Evan was not concerned about the usage of his shadow energy, because the recovery speed of his shadow energy also increased after he advanced to C rank. Before it took him one whole day to recover one unit of shadow energy, but now his recovery speed is way faster than before. Even though it is slower than his mana recovery, it is still not a problem for him to use shadow resurrection on the corpses of B or B plus rank monsters, as long as he wants. If he has to compare, he will say his shadow energy recovery speed is one tenth of his current mana recovery speed. Go my shadows. Let's create an empire of deads for ourselves, Evan said, ordering all of his shadow undead to kill more monsters. Damn it, in novels, when the main character says something like this, he brims with pride, then why am I feeling so embarrassed? Evan thought feeling blessed that there was no one who saw him saying something like this. Woo. But all the shadow undead who heard him did not care about his emotions and cried out in excitement before started moving. Evan felt even more embarrassed after hearing their excited voices and sat down on Eclipse's back. Let's go Eclipse he said and Eclipse dashed deeper into the desert once again. 15 hours later. So this is the Red Rock Mountain. Evan muttered looking at a mountain. Unlike normal mountains, this mountain was completely red in color and perfectly blends with the scorching hot desert. According to the information I read, the Den of Thornbloom Monsters should be located somewhere near the Red Rock Mountain Evan said, and suddenly a black shadow shot out from his shadow storage, going straight high in the sky. Shriek dash. A shriek of an eagle rang out as an undead desert sky eagle started to fly around the Red Rock Mountain. Evan used share senses, and was able to see everything that the eagle was seeing. After around 3 minutes Evan stopped using shadow senses, and his vision returned to normal, found it. Evan said and a smile appeared on his face. Chapter 242 Desert Sky Eagle has a skill called Hawk's Eye. With this skill it can easily see everything within 5 kilometers of the area. And using the share senses skill, Evan can also see everything that the eagle was seeing. With the combination of these two skills, he easily found the location of Thornbloom monsters. Evan summoned back all of his shadow undead inside his shadow storage, and flew up into the sky. After three minutes of flying, he landed on the Red Rock Mountain, and looked at the giant canyon before him. The canyon was very big and stretched deeper into the Red Rock Mountain. So they are the famous Thornblooms of the Verdant Wilds Dungeon Desert. Evan muttered after taking a proper look at the monsters inside the canyon. The Thornbloom is captivating and formidable at the same time, standing at an imposing height. It reaches approximately 7 feet tall. It's sturdy, 
Yet elegant frame exudes an air of strength and resilience. Its body was covered in dark bark-like armor. The armor was filled with sharp and menacing thorns. That provides the creature with both protection and a fearsome means of defense. At the dark backdrop of the thorn bloom's body, some crimson blooms were blossoming. From the thorn bloom's broad shoulders extend muscular arms adorned with thorny vines that entwine around them. These vines serve multiple purposes, acting as both additional defense and a means for the creature to grasp and restrain its foes. Its eyes were deep red and were shining like a fiery orb, giving people a sense of danger. Their den is completely different from the orc den I saw a few days ago. Evan muttered examining everything carefully. Unlike the orc den where orcs were scattered in different mountain ranges, in this den all the thorn blooms were gathered in this canyon. There were different groups of the thorn blooms in the canyon, but they were not far away from each other. After looking carefully at the canyon, Evan assumed there were at least 400 thorn blooms inside the canyon. No wonder some people call the Red Mountain, the Mountain of Blood, Evan said while shaking his head and flew towards the entrance of the canyon. Many hunters died while trying to clear this den, which is why some people call this mountain, the Mountain of Blood. Unlike the outside world where hunters can create a big group to clear dens, they can't do the same thing inside the dungeons. Dungeons have their own set of rules, and hunters have to act according to that. The maximum number of people who can enter VWD at the same time is 10. Just like how only two people can enter in Frozen World Dungeon at the same time, in VWD only 10 people can enter at the same time. The chances of 10 hunters being able to clear this kind of den filled with hundreds of monsters are close to none. But many hunters who were overconfident tried to clear it and died miserably. Many people tried to lure Thornblooms away from the canyon to kill them one by one. But this tactic was also useless, because in the deeper area of the canyon, the groups of Thornbloom are very close to each other, and it is impossible to lure one group away without alerting the other group. In general, this den is even harder to clear than the boss room of the dungeon. Most of the hunters who enter VWD ignore the den of Thornblooms, and very few hunters try to clear it. Evan reached at the entrance of the canyon and landed there. According to what I read no one was able to clear this den till now. Because of the excessive numbers of the thorn blooms, Evan said, and looked at his shadow with a smile on his face. Then let me be the first one to clear this den. Come out my temporary shadow army, it is time to show those thorn blooms the terror of shadow undead. Whoosh dash. Evan's shadow suddenly expanded to several meters and like a door of the abyss was open shadow undead one after another started to come out from it. In just five seconds, all the shadow undeads came out from his shadow storage, releasing their powerful auras. Evan looked at them and nodded his head in satisfaction. Unlike yesterday when he had 40 shadow undeads, currently, there were around 120 shadow undeads in his army. Other than sand serpents, sand worms, scorpions and fire cacti, there were new shadow undeads as well. The most eye-catching were five giant golems standing at the back of the army. They were sand golems that he killed, all five of them were 10 meters high, and had very high defense. The sand golems looked like giant war puppets ready to crush everything in their path. In the front, 15 June Stalkers were standing. The June Stalker is a humanoid monster who has the face of a cat and a body that looks like a human's. They are proficient in hiding and killing their opponents with their surprise attacks. Eclipse was standing in front of June Stalkers acting as their commander. Other than these golems and June Stalkers, there were 13 eagles as well. They were monsters that he encountered recently. All in all, he was pretty confident in clearing the den with his current number of shadow undeads. Golems, you are up. Evan shouted giving them commands since he have a limited amount of time. Some of his shadow undeads will disappear after some time because of the time limit of one hour. All five of the golems started to move towards the entrance of the canyon. Sand serpents and sand worms also moved and went inside the ground. Eagles took into the sky and were ready to attack from above. Other shadow undeads also moved, but stayed a little behind the golems, according to Evan's order. Soon the golems entered the canyon, and the battle finally started. Chapter 243 Five undead sand golems were the first ones to enter the canyon. Roar dash. After entering the canyon all of them roared out loud, attracting the attention of all the thornblooms from the vicinity. Woo dash. When thornblooms saw five black sand golems, they also shrieked out loud and charged towards them. There were tens of thornbloom monsters coming towards them, 
but the golems moved forward without any hesitation. Rumble exclamation point exclamation point. When the thorn blooms were just 50 meters away from the golems, the ground of the canyon suddenly started to shake, and the next second tens of sand worms and sand serpents came out from the ground appearing directly between the group of charging thorn blooms. Caught off guard. The thorn blooms in front were not able to react, and around 10 thorn blooms were instantly killed by sand serpents and worms. Or oh dash. The thorn blooms in the backs were enraged when they saw their comrades getting killed, and shot hundreds of sharp thorns towards the sand serpent and worms. Whoosh dash. Just as thorn blooms attacked, shrieks of eagles sounded, and tens of strong gusts of wind came from the sky, blowing away all of their sharp thorns. Taking advantage of the situation, the sand serpents used sand vortex, while the sand worms used sandblast to attack the nearby group of thornbloom monsters. Because of the sand vortexes and sand blasts, more thornblooms were killed. After using their skills, both the serpents and worms dived back into the ground. The other thornbloom monsters wanted to stop them, but the sand golem used their skill, and a wall rose in front of them, not allowing them to stop serpents and worms. At the same time, the wind picked up the speed, and Thornblooms saw more than 10 black eagles hovering above them. Shriek exclamation point. All the eagles shrieked out loud, and many wind blades rained down on the groups of Thornbloom monsters. The Thornblooms have no choice but to ignore sand serpents and worms, and defend against the incoming attacks of the eagles. While eagles were attacking the sand golems also started to move forward. The poisonous sand scorpions and fire cacti also entered the canyon. They used the walls of the canyon as support and attacked on thorn blooms from there. Aqua used its long rang attack skills as waves of water wreaked havoc in the groups of thorn blooms. Nerox also moved and directly rushed towards a group of Thornbloom holding Eldritch Tree Club. Eclipse used its Shadow Valley and started to assassinate Thornblooms, along with June Stalkers. Because of surprise attacks one after another, many Thornblooms were killed even before they can react properly. Evan was watching everything hovering above the canyon. If he wanted, he could have just told his Shadow Undeads to rush inside the canyon instead of first sending golems then serpents and worms and then eagles. But he knew if he sent all of them without lowering the numbers of the thornblooms, the chances of clearing the den were very low. Unlike Aqua, Necros, and Eclipse, who are his saved shadows, he can't summon or heal his other shadow undeads once they are destroyed. If he just let them enter the canyon directly, they would have been destroyed after some time because of the overwhelming numbers of the thornblooms. Just like what is happening now. Even though by attacking one by one and taking them by surprise his shadow undeads killed around 70 thorn blooms. There were still more than 300 left. During this time, some of his shadow undead disappeared because their one hour time limit was over and some of them died because of the attacks of the blooms. From the initial 120 shadow undeads now there were only 100 left. Around 20 shadow undeads were either destroyed or disappeared. After their time limit was over, the sand worms and sand serpents were coming out from the ground from time to time to kill some thorn blooms. But now that thorn blooms were aware of them, their attacks were also losing effect slowly. If not for the fact that thorn blooms were being attacked by three sides, ground, sky, and underground, they would have already killed most of the shadow undeads with their overwhelming numbers. But since my initial surprise attack succeeded there is nothing that can stop me, now Evan said, and looked at the tens of dead bodies of the thornblooms. A wise man once said necromancers thrive on the battlefield. Shadow energy came out from his monarch core and went inside the dead bodies. Now I understand why he said those words. One after another more than 50 thornblooms rose from the ground and started to attack other thornblooms. He once again used Shadow Resurrection, and more Shadow Undeads rose, while some of the dead bodies exploded. Evan didn't care about the exploded dead bodies, and looked at the battle that changed once again, because of the sudden appearance of Shadow Thornblooms. The groups of Thornblooms never expected something like this to happen, and were once again caught off guard. Many of the Thornblooms were killed once again, and their overwhelming number started to decrease. Evan also took out his Wind Fury Sword and started to rain down wind blades on them using wind manipulation. Because his Wind Fury can increase the power of his wind blades by 200%, they were incredibly powerful and left deep wounds on the bodies of the Thornblooms. The Thornblooms also inflicted serious injuries on Shadow Undeads, 
but they completely ignore the injuries inflicted by them, and continue to attack on them till they were destroyed. The worst thing for Thornblooms was that their main skill energy absorption, which can weaken their enemy and recover their energy, was completely useless against Shadow Undeads. When they tried it on Shadow Undeads, it was completely useless. Like this was not enough, as soon as any Thornbloom dies, Evan will turn it into Shadow Undead, increasing the number of his Shadow Undead even more. As the number of Shadow Undeads increased, the number of Thornblooms started to decrease, and without any problem. The extermination of the Thornbloom Den moved towards its end. Chapter 244 Ooh, dash. Five groups of Thornblooms shrieked in terror as their faces showed expressions full of despair. In those five groups, there were around 50 Thornblooms. In any B-ranked dungeon, this kind of group would have been a nightmare for hunters. But currently, all they can do is run for their lives while shrieking in horror. Behind them, around 200 Thornblooms who were black in color were attacking on them. It has been around one hour since the battle started, and all the shadow undeads that Evan brought with him before entering the canyon already disappeared. But during this time he turned most of the dead Thornblooms into shadow undeads. When most of the Thornbloom died and he turned them into Shadow Undead, the remaining Thornbloom started to run deeper into the canyon. Evan did not even bother to chase after them, and just ordered his Shadow Undeads to finish the job. After his undead Thornbloom left, he started to look for cores along with Eclipse, Necros and Aqua. There were hundreds of dead Thornblooms, and it was obvious if he looked for cores alone, it would have taken him quite some time. So this time along with Eclipse, Necros and Aqua were also looking for cores. Aqua was using high pressure water to split open the bodies of Thornblooms to extract the cores. Now that the Thornblooms were dead, it was easily able to split open their bodies without any problems. Necros was like a barbarian, just ripping apart the bodies to look for the cores. Some time Evan was able to get cores which were scattered after some of the corpses exploded. When his shadow resurrection skill failed. After 30 minutes while he was collecting cores, Evan noticed his shadow thornblooms were coming back. Which mean they finally dealt with all the thornblooms. Evan noticed the number of his shadow thornblooms decreased quite a bit. He had around 200 shadow thornblooms. But now only around 80 of them were left. Their one hour time limit must have run out. Evan muttered and continued to collect cores. Now that he already killed all the Thornblooms he wasn't worried even if they disappear. It took him 30 more minutes to collect all the cores from the bodies of Thornblooms in that area. Let's go deeper and collect the cores from the ones who ran away earlier Evan said, and dash deeper into the canyon with Eclipse and others. His shadow Thornblooms had already disappeared since their time ran out. Till now he collected a total of 52 cores from the Thornblooms, which is a great number of cores. While going deeper, he encountered some dead Thornblooms from time to time who were killed by his shadow undead. Seeing dead Thornblooms, he just looked for cores, but did not use shadow resurrection on them. After using shadow resurrection for so many times without any break for the past hours, his shadow energy is at all time low. The recovery speed of his shadow energy is one tenth of his mana recovery speed, and it will take him hours before his shadow energy will recover. Since he already killed all the Thornblooms, he doesn't want to waste his remaining shadow energy for no reason and turn these Thornblooms into undead. After some time he collected cores from all the Thornblooms who ran away earlier. Now he has a total of 59 cores that he collected from the Thornblooms. Now all I have to do is wait for my prime core to recover before I absorb the cores, and hopefully I will get the skill. Evan said putting away these cores into his shadow storage, along with other cores that he collected. After putting away the cores, Evan was ready to leave the canyon and head back to the ruins. Where he saw the elf, when he suddenly stopped and looked deeper into the canyon. He pondered for a moment before he started to walk deeper into the canyon. He already came quite deep into the canyon while looking for the cores, so it did not take him long before he reached at the end of the canyon. But when he reached at the end of the canyon, he was stunned to see a cave there. This cave was not here when I looked at the canyon earlier through the sky desert eagle. Evan muttered with a frown on his face. He came deeper into the canyon because he felt it was strange for so many thornblooms to gather here. Moreover, Clearing this den is even more difficult than clearing the boss room of the dungeon. But even after clearing it, he did not receive any kind of reward that people receive after clearing the boss room. 
So he came deeper into the canyon just to see if anything changed after he cleared the den, and to his surprise, he saw this cave which was not here when he looked there earlier. Looks like this Thornbloom den is like a hidden level, and you can see this cave only after clearing it. Evan muttered and walked towards the cave. When he entered the cave he saw the ground was uneven, and the walls of the cave were covered in thorn-filled vines. As expected from a cave inside the den of thorn blooms. Evan can't help but say when he saw thorn filled vines in the cave. The cave was not big. And he was able to see the end of it just after entering inside. At the end of the cave he saw a silver colored transparent orb. Which was floating a little above the ground. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw the silver orb and walked towards it. When he came before the orb he was finally able to see what was inside the orb. An earring. Inside the orb was a black cross shaped earring. The earring was not big and was surrounded by a faint silver glow. Evan extended his hand and touched the orb. Just as he touched the orb, the orb disappeared and the cross shaped earring appeared in his hands. Chapter 245 Evan looked at the details of the earring and was instantly stunned. The shielding amulet earring, a rank. This earring automatically forms a protective barrier around the wearer in case of sudden attack or imminent danger, reflecting and repelling incoming attacks. The duration of the barrier is determined by the amount of damage received by it. The barrier will disappear after exhausting its energy. Once the barrier is used it will take 6 hours before the wearer can use it again. A protection type artifact Evan said with shining eyes after reading the details of the earring. Moreover, it is an A rank artifact. Not only it can stop attacks, it can even reflect them back to the attackers. He wasn't sure about the power of the barrier that the earring can form, but he was sure that it will at least be able to block the attacks of an A rank hunter for some time. This earring can save my life at a critical moment. Evan muttered and wore the earring without further delay. I think the reward for clearing this den is even better than clearing the dungeon. Evan can't help but say after wearing the earring. Very rarely people will receive a reward whose rank is higher than the dungeon. But here he received an A rank artifact, even though he didn't clear the dungeon. But when Evan thought about the difficulty of the Thornbloom den, he can't help but think that this reward is actually fair. It was very easy for him to clear this den because of his shadow resurrection skill. But for normal hunters, it is close to impossible to clear this den. Since it is a B rank dungeon, people who are A rank can't enter in it. And the maximum number of hunters that can enter this dungeon at the same time is 10. Even if 10 B plus rank hunters came together to clear this den, it is almost impossible for them to kill around 400 Thornblooms. Is there any other place like this in this dungeon? Evan muttered while rubbing his chin. There are four areas in the Verdant Wilds dungeon, and currently, he is the western area of the dungeon which is the desert. He carefully thought about the details he read about the VWD. But after a moment he shook his head. No one mentioned any old place like the Thornbloom Den in the other three areas Evan said with a sigh and felt a little regretful. There is a chance that there are places like this in the other three areas. But no one found them till now. But Evan doesn't have time to search for them. Considering the size of the other three areas it might take him months before he can search the whole dungeon. This cave is a good place. I should take some rest here and go to the ruins to see that elf waifu Evan said, while ordering a choir and others to guard the entrance of the cave. He ate something before going to sleep. He wasn't able to take proper rest after entering the dungeon since he was traveling all the time. He woke up after 5 hours feeling energetic once again. His mana was fully recovered, but his shadow energy was still recovering. While he was sleeping no monster came to bother him. So when he walked out of the cave, he saw Aquar and Necros bickering with each other, while Eclipse was the only one paying attention to surroundings. These two are really unreliable Evan said with a speechless look while shaking his head. He sat down on Eclipse's back and once again moved towards the ruins. When that elf attacked the fire cacti that I sent to check her, her eyes were emotionless. I wonder if she will talk to me if I try to communicate with her. Evan thought while deep in thought. But suddenly he remembered one crucial fact, and his eyes can't help but twitch. Even if she can speak, how the hell I am going to understand her? It is not like she will speak the same language as me. There is no elf in the Aurora world, so Evan was sure that the elf won't be able to understand the language of the Aurora world. Damn, why the hell I am thinking too much? I will just turn her into Shadow Undead, and I will be able to know everything about her. 
With his shadow undead, Evan has a special connection, and even if a shadow undead can't speak, he can still understand what it wanted to say. Just like how Aquar and others can't speak, but Evan can still understand them. He really wanted to know how that elf came here, and what is she doing in that ruins. Since people can find information about the higher world in the ruins, she might also be someone from there. If I turn her into Shadow Undead, I might be able to get useful information from her. It took Evan 10 hours to reach at the pond where the location of the ruins was located. It took him less time because he already killed most of the monsters, and there was no one to hinder him. He encountered some monsters while coming back, but after killing them, he did not turn them into Shadow Undead. Evan was sure that he will be able to defeat the elf without any problems, and besides, the monsters he killed were all far away from the pond. Even if he turned them into Shadow Undead they would have disappeared even before he can reach the pond. After coming back to the pond, he summoned back Aqua and others into his shadow storage, and jumped inside the pond. He came at the bottom of the one and touched the green stone which was the entrance of the ruins. Just as he touched the stone he disappeared from the pond, and appeared inside the lush forest just like last time. Let's see if I can get something from that elf or not. Evan muttered and walked towards the giant tree. Chapter 246 Evan stopped around 200 meters away from the giant tree. Just like last time, the elf was still sitting under the tree with her eyes closed. So how should I act? Evan thought while rubbing his chin. Should I try to talk to her or directly attack her? After pondering for some time Evan decided to go with a gentlemanly way and talk to her first. Unlike monsters of dungeons, he thought she should be smart enough to understand him. Even though she attacked his fire cacti yesterday the moment she saw it, it is possible that she attacked on it because it was a monster. Well, if she attacks me just like what she did with the cacti, I will just kill her and turn her into a shadow undead. Evan muttered and summoned Aqua and others. After summoning them he walked towards the elf, but asked his shadow undeads to not follow him and just stay there. When he was just 100 meters away from her he stopped and shouted, Hey, doesn't your bottom hurt after sitting in the same place for such a long time? This was the moment when Eclipse and others realized their master sucks at socializing. It has been a very long since Evan tried to talk to someone of his own volition, so he doesn't know how to start a proper conversation. When he approached the elf he thought about how he should start the conversation with her. In the end, he just asked the question which was in his mind, after seeing she was sitting at the same place where he saw her yesterday. Aqua and others made faces like they were fascipaming and shook their heads. Just as Evan shouted, the elf slowly opened her eyes and looked at him with the same emotionless eyes. Seeing those eyes Evan knew his plan of peaceful approach is not going to work. The next second he saw a white golden light flashing around the elf. He felt all hairs on his body stand up to no end. And he immediately activated temporal velocity. Whoosh dash. He watched as the elf suddenly stood up and shot towards him with lightning speed. Even though he activated temporal velocity, he still felt she was too fast. She arrived before him and swung her slender leg at his face like a whip. Using his improved precautions and agility because of his temporal velocity skill, Evan barely stepped aside and avoided the kick. But even though he avoided direct contact with her leg, the wind pressure brought by her leg still moved forward and split open the ground. Evan was also blown away by the wind pressure and barely stabilized himself. F.U. Asterisk K. That was dangerous as Evan. S. Forward was drenched in a cold sweat as he cursed. If that kick connected to his face, he was sure he would have lost more than some teeth. When Evan looked back at the elf he saw her eyes were still the same, and there was no emotion on her face. Her whole body was surrounded by a light golden aura, giving people a sense of danger and awe at the same time. Alright, looks like there is no hope to end this peacefully. Evan thought while feeling a little regretful this elf is not talking. He completely discarded the fact that she might not be talking because of the way he started the conversation. I just hope after becoming a shadow undead, she will give me some useful information. The elf was about to move towards Evan once again when she suddenly stopped and quickly jumped back. Just as she backed away a pressurized cannon of water flew past from there avoiding her narrowly. But when she backed away Eclipse suddenly appeared behind her and slashed at her using its sharp claws. 
Even when Eclipse suddenly appeared behind her, the expression on the face of the elf didn't change. She bent forward her body at an unnatural angle, showing her flexibility and avoided Eclipse's attack. At the same time, she kicked Eclipse right at the center of its stomach, sending it flying backwards like a broken kite. Just as she sent Eclipse flying, Necros appeared before her and swung the Eldritch Tree Club at her. The elf was still recovering her balance after sending Eclipse flying, so she had no chance of dodging the attack. In the end, she clenched her fist and punched at the incoming Tree Club. Evan thought she will be injured severely after this attack, but the next thing that happened made his eyes open wide from shock. Boom dash. The fist and tree club clashed, and a loud explosion happened as the shockwaves swept the area split, opening the ground. At the same time, Evan saw Nurkrose was sent flying backwards, while the elf was just pushed back. Her hand that she used to clash against the tree club was broken and was completely limp. But the fact that she was able to send Necros flying, made Evan's mind go blank. Just what kind of monstrous strength is this? Evan can't help but speak out loud. She wasn't even in the proper position when she punched Necros, but she was still able to overpower it. Is she really an elf or Hercules in disguise? Evan blurted out feeling speechless after seeing how this dainty looking elf sent giant Necros flying away. Suddenly a 10 meters high wave of water came out of nowhere going straight towards the elf. Aqua controlled the water wave as suddenly tens of sharp water blades appeared inside the wave. Seeing the water wave the eyes of the elf shine and the next second a white barrier appeared around her. The water wave filled with water blades, clashed against the barrier, and just made some ripple over it. The water wave was completely useless against the barrier. Evan was already shocked after seeing how she was handling Aqua and others with such ease. But the next thing that happened made his mind go completely blank. Chapter 247 From inside the barrier the elf looked at the water wave that was assaulting her light barrier. Suddenly the white golden aura around her intensified, and her broken arm started to heal at a rapid speed. Her limp arm went back to normal in just a few seconds. If anyone saw her arm now they will never think it was broken just a moment ago. After her arm recovered she clenched her fist, the white golden aura condensed around her fist as a powerful pressure covered the surroundings. After a few seconds, the white golden aura around her fist was so bright that Evan wasn't even able to see her fist. Suddenly the barrier covering her disappeared, and just before the water wave struck her, she punched forward using her full strength. Boom dash. Just as she punched forward the white golden aura around her fist burst forth, blowing away the water wave as the floor of the surrounding area trembled. At the same time, a beam of white golden light shot towards Aqua who was controlling the water wave a moment ago. Even before Aqua can react the beam of white light struck it, and half of its body was immediately destroyed. Evan was shocked to the bones after seeing what happened, and immediately used his mana to heal Aqua. If not for the fact that Aqua is a shadow undead, it would have died because of that earlier attack. Just what kind of monster is this elf? Evan gulped down his saliva, wondering just how can she is so powerful, even though she is also a B plus rank just like Nurkros and others. That white golden aura around her is definitely light element. I saw some people who can use light element in the past two years that I spent here, but I never saw someone using it like this. Evan thought and arched his eyebrows. At first, he was doubtful if she is using light element or not. But after seeing how she healed her hand, he was sure that it is definitely light element. But apart from healing, she was using the light element in a completely different way. If I am not wrong she is using light elements to strengthen the cells of her body, to increase her physical strength to a completely different level. Evan thought and looked at the elf feeling admiration towards her. Necros and Eclipse once again tried to attack on the elf, but they were once again sent flying. If things continue to go like this, I don't think I will be able to beat her. Evan muttered and looked at Eclipse, Aqua and Necros. Come back all of you. After a moment when nothing changed he called back all three of them. Aqua and others backed away and returned to Evan's side. The elf also didn't attack immediately after they backed away and looked at Evan. I didn't think I will have to use this skill to deal with a B plus ranker. Evan thought and used his unique skill Shadow Possession. He chose Necros as his target who suddenly turned into a wisp of black smoke and rushed towards his body. The wisp entered into his body and was absorbed by his monarch core. 
The next second he felt a burning sensation all over his body, and his appearance started to change. His height started to increase, and reached 210 centimeters from the initial 185 centimeters. A red eye that looked similar to Necro's eye appeared at the middle of his forehead. His body shape also changed, and he became more muscular. His aura also skyrocketed and reached a B-plus rank. Evan felt endless power coursing inside him. Even though he reached a B-plus rank after merging with Necro's, both of his cores remained at their previous level. But he can feel he is far stronger than any B-plus ranker, because of the support of his two cores. After using Shadow Possession, Evan didn't even wait for a second before he took action. He can use Shadow Possession for only two minutes, so he wanted to finish everything as soon as possible. Boom dash. The ground beneath his feet was cracked open as Evan charged towards the elf. At the same time he used Temporal Velocity to increase his agility. Even before the elf can react he appeared before her. Currently his agility was so fast that it looks like he teleported in front of the elf, who was around 100 meters away from him. Even though Evan was not used to such high agility, he was easily able to control it because of temporal velocity, which made him perceive everything in slow motion. Evan was holding the Eldritch Tree Club of Necros, as he swung it at her, and used its function of increasing the weight. Right parenthesis Eldritch Tree Club B rank colon, a club made from the Eldritch Wood. The club has a 5% chance of inflicting shatter effect while being used. If the shatter effect is activated, any armor or weapon below B rank will be destroyed in a single hit, and the B rank armor and weapons will be greatly damaged. While using the club you can increase its weight up to 500 pounds according to your will. He increased its weight to 500 pounds. The surrounding air exploded as the tree club came smashing toward the elf. Because of Evan's high agility which was now even faster than her, the elf did not get time to dodge the attack, and used her fist to block the attack. Boom dash. An explosion which was louder than when the necros and the elf clashed, happened as the surrounding area shook. The ground was split open and deep crevices formed there. The shockwaves swept hundreds of meters of the area as the faraway trees were uprooted and were blown away. At the same time, a small figure of the elf was sent flying backwards as she spat out mouthful of blood while in mid-air, and crashed on the ground after flying for more than 100 meters away. Chapter 248 The elf crashed 100 meters away, coughing out more blood in the process. Her hand which she used to clash against the tree club turned into meat paste because of the impact, and now she was missing one of her arms. Her aura also dropped, and the mana inside her body became chaotic because of the impact of the attack. Evan doesn't want to give her a chance, so he followed after her. But just as he dashed towards her once again, the white golden aura around her burst forth. Evan was forced to stop because suddenly more than 20 white spears materialized around her and shot towards him at lightning speed. At the same time, the injury that she suffered started to heal at a rapid speed. Even the arm that she lost earlier started to regenerate under the power of her light element. The light spears were even faster than the bullets, but Evan who was using temporal velocity, still able to see them coming without any problems. The light spears were releasing a sharp and powerful aura, giving people a sense of danger. Evan used wind manipulation, and the Eldritch Tree Club was instantly surrounded with wind element, increasing its durability and swinging speed. When the light spears came into his range of attack, he swung the tree club at rapid speed, destroying all the light spears. The speed at which he swung the club was so fast that it left behind after images. In just one second he destroyed all the light spears, and rushed towards the elf once again, who was still trying to heal her injuries. Seeing Evan coming towards her, the elf created a light shield before her to buy herself some time. Surprisingly all this time the expressions of elf remain the same. Since Evan already used shadow possession, he didn't care about the elf anymore. When he saw the shield he just smirked and smashed it with the tree club. Now he was completely fighting like necros, destroying everything that was in front of him. The tree club clashed against the light shield, and it was broken like a glass. With the power of Necros and the support of his two cores, Evan was even confident enough to fight against an A-rank hunter for some time, much less a B-plus ranker. Even though the elf was powerful she was still not his match after he used Shadow Possession. The tree club hit the elf right in the stomach, sending her fly once again as she rolled on the ground like a rag doll after being blown away. 
She spat out blood with her internal organs mixed in it, and the light golden aura around her completely disappeared. At the same time, the eye at the center of Evan's forehead lit up as he used Necro's skill. A vast amount of mana gathered in his eye as it shined with a crimson glow. Booyong Dash. The next second a beam of crimson light struck the place right next to the elf, sending her flying once again as her aura became incredibly weak. All of her internal organs were heavily damaged. Most of her bones were broken, and she was bleeding from all over. After using Nika's skill, Evan looked at the sorry figure of the elf, before he walked towards her slowly. He was sure that if the attacker people of the earth who are crazy about elves, saw how he beat down a beautiful looking elf, they would have rushed towards him holding their imaginary Excalibur to kill him. Well, even in my past life I was a fan of Kazuma Sato of Konosuba, so gender equality is more important to me. Evan thought and arrived before the elf. He can see she was trying to use the light element to heal herself. But considering her injuries, he was sure that she will not be able to heal in a short period of time. Evan looked at her face and saw her expression was still the same, while her eyes were hollow. Can you speak? Evan tried to ask her before dealing the final blow. But even when he asked the elf didn't respond to him, and continued to heal herself like he didn't exist. She is really mentally retarded, huh? Evan muttered and put away the tree club, and took out Wind Fury Sword. Not wanting something unexpected to happen because he was talking to her during the fight, he stabbed the sword right into her heart without any sympathy. From the way she fought with him, it was clear she was trying to kill him, so he did not feel anything while killing her. The sword dug into her heart as the light inside her eyes started to dim down. The dim white aura of light element completely disappeared from around her, and her body stopped healing. In just a few seconds the light from her eyes was completely gone, and her life force disappeared. Evan took a deep breath and took out the wind fury sword which was plunged into her heart. He looked at the elf feeling disappointed he didn't get anything from her. Let's see if she will be any different after becoming a shadow undead. Evan muttered and was about to use shadow resurrection when something unexpected happened. He watched as the body of the elf slowly started to turn into motes of white light, and those motes of light disappeared into the void. What the hell? Evan was stunned when he saw what was happening because he never saw something like this. Shadow Resurrection Before the body of the elf completely disappeared, he used his Shadow Resurrection skill on her. Shadow energy came out from his monarch core and went into the body of the elf. Just as the shadow energy entered inside her, her body stopped turning into motes of white light. When shadow energy came out from his monarch core, Evan was stunned because he lost around 5% of shadow energy in an instant when he used Shadow Resurrection on the elf. Even when he turned Lael into Shadow Undead, it took less shadow energy than this time, even though she is an A-rank hunter. Chapter 249 Normally it doesn't even take one perfect of his total shadow energy to turn a B-plus ranker into a Shadow Undead. This elf is really not normal. Evan muttered as he watched the surrounding area become dark because of too much shadow energy that came out from his core. Even though it was completely dark he was still clearly able to see everything in the darkness. Slowly all the darkness seeped inside the body of the elf, and the surroundings returned to normal. When all the shadow energy seeped inside her, the body of the elf started to shake. Evan quickly backed away from her afraid her body might explode. The body of the elf continued to shake for some time. At the same time the duration of his shadow possession ended, and Evan returned to normal. A black wisp left his monarch core and came outside from his body, and then that wisp turned into Necros who was completely fine. Evan also didn't feel any discomfort when shadow possession ended which made him sigh in relief because generally, people suffer from weakness after they increase their rank using a skill. Just what the hell is going on with this elf? Evan said while arching his eyebrows because her body is shaking for around one minute now. Normally when he used Shadow Resurrection, it will either succeed immediately or will fail. But the current situation is completely foreign to him, since something like this never happened before. I will be sent out from here soon since I defeated her. I can't wait for two, Long Evan said, while looking at the two golden fruits and decided to grab them first, in case he will be expelled from her suddenly. But just as he was about to walk towards the fruits he saw the body of the elf stop shacking. The next second a black shadow which looks similar to the elf came out from her body. 
it succeed. Evan was excited after seeing Shadow Resurrection did not fail. He was afraid that Shadow Resurrection will fail, and the body of the elf will explode. But just as Shadow Resurrection succeeded and the Shadow Elf came out, the real body of the elf completely disappeared from there. Just what the heck is wrong with this elf? Evan can't help but say seeing so many strange things in such a short period of time. First, the body of the elf started to turn into motes of light after he killed her. Then, when he used Shadow Resurrection, it consumed 5% of his total shadow energy. Like this was not enough, even with the 5% of shadow energy it took one whole minute, before she turned into Shadow Undead. And now when she turned into Shadow Undead, even though her body didn't turn into motes of light, it still disappeared without leaving behind any traces. There is definitely something wrong with this place. Evan muttered feeling strange while looking around him. But he soon ignored all of this, and looked at the shadow elf who appeared before him. She looks similar to the original elf, except for the fact that now she was completely black in color, and purple flames were burning in her eye sockets. Can you speak? Evan asked the shadow elf, hoping she will be different from her original self. No crows. Eclipse and Aqua who were standing at the side, visibly sighed in relief when they saw their master started the conversation in the proper way this time. They were afraid he will ask whether her bottom is still hurting or not after turning into Shadow Undead. Evan waited for some time after asking, and just when he was thinking she can't speak, she opened her mouth. Pounds, and, at sign, she said something in a strange language that he didn't understand. Evan immediately understood she can speak but the language she is using is completely different. He was thinking about talking to her just like how he speak with Aqua and others, when he suddenly felt a mild headache. He grabbed his head and felt something flowing into his mind. Soon he recognized what was flowing inside his head, it was actually one of the dreams that he saw after passing out during his advancement to see rank. He saw many dreams, while his core was forming a connection with the Shadow Realm. After he woke up he forgot about most of the things that he saw in those dreams. But currently, the memories of one of those dreams was flowing inside his mind. He remembered in that dream he was in a completely different world, and used to work as a mercenary. He don't know why that dream was flowing in his mind, but soon along with that dream, he felt a strange knowledge was also flowing inside his brain. It lasted for around one minute, and soon the mild headache he was feeling started to disappear. But Evan stood there with a dazed look on his face. Along with the scene where he was working as a mercenary in a different world, the second thing that flowed into his mind was actually information about a language. The name of the language is Lothland, also known as Elf Tang. With the same dazed look, he once again looked at the Shadow Elf and asked once again, Can you speak? Yes, the Elf said. And he understood her without any problem. All right. Now I don't understand what the fu asterisk k is going on here anymore. Evan rubbed his temples feeling annoyed because of the strange things that were happening with him. There were many things that he wanted to ask the elf. But before he can ask her anything the surroundings around him started to shake. At the same time, he felt a power wrapping around him trying to expel him from the dungeon. He immediately stopped thinking about all the things. And quickly summoned back a choir and others including the elf into his shadow storage. After summoning them he ran towards the two golden fruits, which were the reward for clearing the ruins. While running he felt his surroundings turning blurry. Even used temporal velocity to increase his agility, and arrived before the two golden fruits. He extended both of his hands and quickly threw the fruits inside his shadow storage. Just as he threw them inside his shadow storage, his surroundings turned completely blurry, and he disappeared from the dungeon. Chapter 250 Somewhere far away from the Aurora world, at a place filled with lush green trees and mountains, different kinds of animals were roaming in the surroundings, and birds were chirping happily showing the beauty of the nature. Many elves can be seen walking all around from time to time, but none of the animals attacked on them. This place is Moon Forest, the capital of the Elvenshine, the kingdom of the elves. Moon Forest is located at the center of the Elvenshine, and is one of the safest places in the world. In the middle of the Moon Forest stood a giant tree which is thousands of meters high. This is the Tree of Life, the Divine Tree of the Elves. Elves and Dryads are always at odds with each other, because Elves have the Tree of Life, and Dryads have the World Tree with them. 
But this is the story of another time as currently an elf with long golden hair sits under the majestic tree of life, creating a captivating scene of harmony between nature and her ethereal presence. Her golden locks cascade down like a shimmering waterfall, framing her face and reflecting the warm glow of the sunlight filtering through the tree's lush foliage. She was looking at the sky with her amber-colored eyes seemingly lost in her own thoughts. She was wearing flowing garments, woven from delicate and organic fabrics, perhaps in shades of earthy greens or ethereal blues, adorned with intricate patterns reminiscent of leaves, branches, or blooming flowers. She is Alistria, also known as the Moonlit Empress, the Queen of the Elves and one of the Forbidden Physique Holders. As she was looking into the sky she felt something and stopped looking at the sky. Just as she stopped looking at the sky a female elf appeared before her in the kneeling position. Unlike Alistria, the hairs of this elf were silver in color, and in terms of beauty, she was a step behind her. But she was a step behind only when compared to Alistria, otherwise even when compared to other elves, she can be considered a perfect beauty. Did you find anything Lyrith? Alistria asked in a soft voice while looking at the kneeling female in front of her. I am sorry your majesty, but even after using all of our connections, I wasn't able to find anything. Lyrith, the kneeling elf said while lowering her head. Hum, that bastard Baphomet sure is cunning. Looks like he doesn't want other people to know he is sending some of his essence into lower worlds. Which is why you are not able to gather any information regarding this even after all this time Alistria said with a pondering look on her face. I am not sure, but I think he is just trying to influence people of the lower worlds. So that their core will evolve into demon core after they use the Tower of Ascension. Lyareth spoke in a hesitant voice after hearing Alistria. I can also think this much smart a asterisk s. But I want to know why he wants to influence people of the lower world, Alistria said while rolling her eyes, completely destroying her graceful image. Meanwhile, Lyareth just lowered her head once again without any surprise on her face. It was clear she is used to her queen speaking like this. I also sent a wisp of my essence in one of the lower worlds where Baphomet sent his wisp. But since my nature energy doesn't have a corrosive effect like his demonic energy that can even corrode barriers between the worlds, I wasn't able to properly control it while crossing the world barriers and lost connection with it, Alistria said while shaking her head. I wonder what happened to that wisp. But before I lost connection with that wisp, it was successfully able to cross the world and even took over a dungeon. Once someone defeats that wisp its essence will return to me once again. Alistria thought and chuckled. Well, it will return to me if someone defeats that wisp. But considering it is my wisp I am afraid no one will be able to defeat it in that dungeon. Alistria said and looked at Lyareth once again. What about the other matter did you find anything? I wasn't able to find anything significant. But according to the information I received Malfasa is currently missing. From what I know he is sent somewhere by Baphomet. And no one other than Baphomet and his other four commanders knows what he is currently doing. Lyareth replied after hearing Alistria. What the hell that fu asterisk her is trying to do? Should I just barge into his palace and ask him directly? Alistria spoke while narrowing her eyes. Lyareth who heard what her queen said started to sweat buckets. She knew her queen have some screw looses. And she might really barge there. Forget about it, you can leave. Inform me immediately if you find anything new. Alistria said to Lyareth while waving her hand. Lyareth sighed in relief seeing Elystria drop the idea of directly barging into the country of demons. She gave one last bow to Elystria before disappearing from the place. What a cute little girl Elystria said while chuckling after Lyareth left from there. Even though Lyareth is hundreds of years old, for Elystria who is thousands of years old, she is still a little girl who was born recently. It is clear Baphomet is trying to expand his army by influencing people of the lower worlds to evolve their cores into demon cores. But what is the reason for him to expand his army? Elystria muttered while looking at the clear sky. Just as she was thinking, she felt something and her eyes opened wide because of the shock. She immediately stood up and waited for some time. After a few seconds, some white motes of light came out from the void and appeared before her. The essence I sent to the lower world came back Elystria said while feeling stunned. She extended her hand and touched the motes of white light. Just as she touched the motes of white light, they were absorbed by her. And she received some of the memories from that essence. 
This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.